and welcome to episode 248 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, artist of the Monster Spotters Club, and joining me yes. this week and joining me this week are the creator of Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And the third wheel to our tricycle of doom, Mr. Tony Esmond. Hello. The tricycle of sex, not doom. Well, it's the same thing. <laughs> potato, <laughs> potato. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show, folks. Um, we're all in a fantastic mood. We've been reading a lot oh. of comics. We've been oh, yeah. creating a lot of stuff. And uh, we just had a fantastic interview with one Jason McNamara that you're going to hear mm. very soon. What a dude. We never spoke to him before and he turned out to be a dude. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. love it when that happens. Yeah. You yeah, get on the show and it's fun. Yeah. All we knew was these comics are badass. <laughs> so and you're gonna yeah. hear you're gonna hear more about those very shortly. Um but we're yeah, we're in such a good mood and we're not even fueled by caffeine. I don't know if you've had caffeine tonight, Jens. I've had a lot of caffeine today. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You I, uh, honest, you, go on. Because it's a lockdown, like it always seems like something to do, you know. Yeah, coffee. It's uh, that's, I've had a lot of coffee. Today. That's not the way to live your life, gents. I built some bookshelves this week. That's, for, yeah, that's how great. bad it's been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, you built some bookshelves for the next level of your giant fucking tomb you're building <laughs> for yourself. That is your comic book library. Mo, mo comics, mo bookshelves, baby. Yeah, I've. Uh, got a, a thing i'm a gaslighting my colleagues at work they say now i'm getting really fat i'm not doing an exercise i've set up like an exercise routine and a weights bench i'm doing weights in the morning weights in the evening i'm going to be eating all the proper stuff i'm going to come back like a fucking tank yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three months of this hardcore training at home <laughs> well it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of people who will have done a lot of wanking don't they do you know yeah. what i mean yeah, yeah. gotta be done and uh, we hope you lovely listeners are staying safe and healthy as well. So, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> how are you getting through it? I'll tell you how we, we're getting, getting through it. We're reading comics on Comic House, but also we're doing our draw-off competition, which... Look, Dan, why are you murdering... You, like, you, you've, set up, you've set up... I thought, <laughs> Jesus Christ, the boy's he done was well off running. I thought, I, I thought... I was always taking that turn, and I thought, well, that's too pro. No, I, I thought, this is smooth. This is amazing. This is Dan Butcher yeah. at his finest. And then you went and ruined it. <laughs> I hand break it back round. Yeah, so we've been spending our time uh, checking out comics on ComicHouse.com. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because they are our sponsor. They are the indie comic marketplace with a difference. <laughs> they are UK-based but there, there's comics from all over the world on there. There's a huge selection of titles on the Comic House website itself. Uh, if you self-publish, you can list your book on there for free. Start selling straight away. It's like another sh- comic shop front. And what we talk about every week, and we love and we, we check out, is the Comic House app. Seriously, folks and small press creators, digital comics are now more prevalent than ever right now. And Comic House is a great way to get hold of them. Um, it's basically like Netflix for comics subscription service only three pounds a month which is cheap as chips absolutely you know the amount of comics you get for that is ridiculous fucking loads yeah there's an enormous library of digital indie comics and they're adding stuff all the time what stuff have they got there on the moment Dan we've got uh, Untethered issue 3 Blender volume 1 Trujillo uh, uh, we've got Don't Judge Me by uh, Alan Henderson the Penguins again Last Arrival issue 2 Lima Game by Gustavo. Uh, there's a ton of it. Also on uh, the Comic House page right now, interview with uh, Daryl Thorpe. Oh, is it? So, Thorpe, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. I'll have a look at that. Okay. Yes. Does Gary do them? Does Gary Watson do them? The gas man. He, does, he does indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Watson from Comics Anonymous. Um, yeah. Yes, and just to show the power of Comic House, we talked about New York City Gallows on last week's show, and it went to yeah. the top of the Comic House Top 10. It did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. and the one that's in the reading yeah. group, which is the shark one, I'll forget the name of it now. Bruce. Bruce, that's it. That's like number three or something, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. That reading group certainly has a lot of power to boost stuff up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, it says uh, Dan Vanguard, it, number three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, you know, if you're a small press creator, if you maybe you've got like a just a comic just on your hard drive somewhere, um, you know, just collecting Pop dust, it put it on there because mm. people will be checking it out, and you know, you will get some uh, 
some coins for your purse. Yeah. yeah. If you want say. to be a part of the um, the drawing group, the reading group, Ian Loxham organises it once a week. He puts a book up, and we all comment on it. Yeah. 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 On the uh, Facebook page, it's good. It's good to do. Yeah. I, I did my my little reply today. Yeah. I've uh, read Bruce again because I think I read when it first put on there, and I've yet to put my thoughts up, but shouldn't yeah. take too long. Yeah. And we'll, okay. We will let you know where the, the group is at the end of the show when we do all, all of those yeah. links and stuff. Um, but you know, in in these times, the comics community is really coming together, and Comic House it's a perfect place for them to go. So go to comichouse dot com. Um, there's a 14 day free trial, and no, actually, they, didn't they have an offer as well? Yeah. Can I uh, go for it? There's an, another further month free using oh. code Stay Safe. Yep. There you go. So there you go. Go go and read lo- lots of comics. They will, you know, just help you in every way, shape, and form because comics always do, and and also, you know. They they support the show, yeah. so go, go don't help. go down the park having a fucking barbecue or on the yeah, beach. Yeah, yeah. comics. Yeah, I mean we're like a sea of tea. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well done, Dan. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we're comics people. What on earth are we doing going outside anyway? Uh, <laughs> you got this. You're losing out. I've read like twenty comics today. Yeah, and that was just yeah, in the brilliant. past five minutes. Um, cause yeah. Tony, reads, Tony reads a lot of comics um, but speaking of comics you want to hear some uh, comic talk with fantastic creators that's what you join us every week for occasionally we have a show with just three of us and you very kindly listen to that as well um, <laughs> but yeah. through charity of some kind <laughs> yes <laughs> yes. but we got an absolutely fantastic interview uh, from a creator who is thinking on our wavelength so make of that what you will um, so <laughs> here is our interview with the great Jason McNamara, enjoy. Right, this week we are very pleased to yeah. be joined by a writer who pretty much landed on our radars with a sonic boom recently. Um, his work includes such titles as Ghost Band, Sucker, The Rattler, and one that was recommended, I think just last week, wasn't it, Dan, I believe? Nocturnal Commissions. Um, yes. Yep. Those last two titles being collaborations with the masterful Greg Hinkle. It's our pleasure to welcome Jason McNamara to the show. Hello, sir. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. Good Vince, stuff, man. Tony, Dan. Well done. You you again. Written that down, you bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking your virtual hands right now, touching my face. <laughs> <laughs> Scratching myself. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most hygienic comic book podcast available at the moment. So it's completely safe. And uh, yes, thank you for joining us this week, Jason, because literally, as as I said in that intro, we've all kind of um, discovered your work recently and it just struck a chord with all of us. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. and I, I discovered it last year. I'd like to point that out. I did uh, well, you discover everything year. before everyone else, Tony. Uh, That's kind of what you do, isn't it? <laughs> Which what, what did you read first, Tony? Uh, Sucker issue one. Yeah, uh, May yes. last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The That's... Thinking Man's Incest Book. Yes. <laughs> best best cover of the year. Best cover of the year. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, was, that was yeah. that was my idea. Oh, was it the boobs? Yeah, oh, nice. the boobs. Yeah, yeah. I invented boobs. Boobs and rats. Always a great combination. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a lot of our listeners have just gone to the website to pre-order. Now. <laughs> yeah. Put me on a list. Yeah. <laughs> tell you what, being on, I said it to you before. Being in isolation has really put pay to my wanking. I've got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear God. We're we're only two minutes into the the full <laughs> interview. Although um, we've we've read his comics, we know he doesn't mind. Yes. I don't, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> because they they really do. Uh, come from the dark side, um, which is yeah. why we knew we had to get Jason on the show. Um, oh, whether, thank you. Where, whether it be um, sort of with humour uh, or just something that will really fucking creep you out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and uh, we, we just read the books and just thought, I need to talk to this guy. I mean, Tony and Dan had um, they had preached about nocturnal commissions. And certainly, yeah. I looked at the artwork and I just thought, okay, this looks like something. If that there was... was ever a book that was up your street, man, that was yeah. the one. We yeah, said it to you before. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I was like, okay. Uh, and then when I got a chance to read it, it was like someone had just dipped into my brain and made a comic for me. Now, you, I know because you... you texted us about what about noon today, saying "fucking hell." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the pull quote right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking more. hell and I'm going to really? attribute to either Vince, Tony or Dan oh, thank you Cheers. just just in unison um, <laughs> yes. we're like an acapella fucking hell 
on this show. Um, yeah, the but... <laughs> acapella. Oh my god! No, we're not getting into acapella, Tony. We're not doing that again. <laughs> Barbershop. <laughs> yeah. I but... can put the specials back on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but before we get on to that, the, the latest book, and there's obviously your collaborations with uh, Greg Henkel as well. You know, what? How did you get started in comics? What is your origin story, as it were? My origin story, man. I grew up like I, my father taught me how to read with comic books. Nice. So like that fucking prick. If I had a time machine, <laughs> uh, I'd go back in time and like knock the comic books out of my hand and put a copy of like Moby Dick or something. In there. <laughs> so that motherfucker doomed me at a very young age. My father loved um, Savage Sword of Conan. With Good those, man. Those Frazetta That's... covers. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like the boobs, the the Bernie you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're just gorgeous. So he had to buy something else while he was at the store. Uh, so he would buy me comic books and read them to me. So, you know, I knew, like, Spider-Man's thwip, the sound of his web shooter. Like, that was a word I knew how to say before spot meets dog. Like, it's just always been a part oh, of yeah. um, my culture. So growing up, that was my thing. You know, I was the kid on the playground who would rather read comic books or books than play with other kids, you know, those fucking shit rats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got all my morality from comic books, which says a lot. I mean, but what comic books, though? Because you have to be quite specific. I mean, let's face it, if you're reading Archie, that's a different morality than if you're reading The Punisher. Yeah. Oh, Was right, Black right. Kiss. Was it Black Kiss you grew up on? Or... <laughs> uh, o- Omaha the Cat Dancer. Uh, I love the bit of furry action in that book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah, great one. I don't think that... Have you read that, Vincent Dan? No, no, no. Uh, we're doing an episode on Omar yeah. the Cat Dancer one day, my friend. Yeah, it's it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it, you two will want to de- double penetrate a cat. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the title of this week's episode. <laughs> you two will see the benefits. Uh, so most uh, mostly Marvel comic books, okay. but this, this was the eighties, uh, so there were a lot of um, black and white comic books coming to, to, to school some of my friends would be into Faust. i don't know if you remember tim vigil's Faust. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes yeah very uh very edgy that was a lively first issue doesn't someone get crucified with their <laughs> yes. knob out on the... yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so there was always somebody bringing a book like that to school that would show you there was more going on uh i got in early on the teenage mutant ninja turtles but it was still a black and white book before the cartoons mm, yeah. and everything yeah, me too. I loved it back then, actually. I really liked that sort of rawness to it. It's a real sort of underground-y feel to it back then, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah, it was great. So I sort of always saw storytelling and I saw the world in that in that format, you know? So if I had like a really – if I had a heartbreak or something – or another heartbreak or uh, a heartbreak, you would put it in the <laughs> – you would you know, transition it into like comic book panel. Like how would John Romita Jr. illustrate this? You started seeing yeah. the world as a comic book. Yeah. Uh, no, I I, completely. When I graduated high school, I worked at a comic book store called Paper Moon 2 uh, on Larkfield Road in on Long Island in New York. It was a dump. <laughs> I was about to say, does it still <laughs> exist? But it doesn't sound no, like it. No. They oh. sold it to some guy named Vinny, and he had a partner, another guy named Vinny, and the two Vinnies drove it into the ground. So uh, yeah, if you see two guys named Vinny, run. Yeah. I'm Vince for anyone. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. wonders. No, it's <laughs> Alan Connection. Yeah. But uh, it always stayed in my mind that I love comic books, and I was always uh, writing, you know, creatively. I always thought I'd be a filmmaker too. So that sort of that language of film, the visual language of film, always appealed to me. Mm. And then uh, you know, I I grew up a little bit, and I, I became a drug. Uh, fall down drunk and uh, you know I married one lady and that didn't work out and then I was a heartbroken drunk and I moved to San Francisco and I was living um, in this big apartment building it used to be a converted YMCA and you would walk down the halls and you would just hear the sounds of lonely heartbroken men and the sounds they make in their apartments you know uh, and it was around this time where I was like ah, yeah, I'll probably just drink myself to death when I met um Tony Talbert, the illustrator from Sucker. Okay, oh, wow. I, I was in a, yeah. Uh, he, I knew him. We worked at the same company, but we didn't really interact much. We worked mm-hmm. at the same coffee chain, and I went into a bar, and he's in there, and he's just talking about Wally Wood, like screaming about Wally Wood, about Wally Wood's <laughs> costume design and all this stuff. And you think, like, who does that? 
You don't normally walk into a bar and hear some guy scream yeah. about how misunderstood Wally Wood is, right? <laughs> Uh, so that warmed him to me, and uh, you know, so we both uh, we, we both had a big affection for Steve Ditko, uh, and we just hit it off. And he he went out of town for something. It was around nine eleven. He was going out of town, and he's like, "Hey, will you come over and feed my cats?" And I was like, "Sure, I can do that for you." So I went to his apartment. And he was out of town, and his apartment was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> like he was a bachelor, he lived alone, and I mean, like. You know, like condoms stuck in the carpet. Disgusting. Jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I love the guy. He won't mind me telling you and your thousands of listeners this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his, so I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to clean this guy's apartment. That's what I can do for him, you know? So I bought him like a shower curtain, which he didn't have, and did some laundry. And I found on top of his refrigerator, uh, beneath a couple of boxes of wine, I found this like 70 page samurai epic that he had penciled, inked, and colored. And I sat there and I read it, and he didn't finish it. Like, he got like seven, you know, it was like a 100-page thing. He got like 70 pages into it and just petered out. And he came back, and I was like, hey, dude, I, fa- I found this thing. You draw comic books? I had no idea. It's gorgeous. He's like, yeah, I got like 70 pages into it. I just got tired. I didn't want to finish it. And that broke my heart, you know? Like, this mm-hmm. guy had all the talent, but he just didn't... He needed like a manager. Do you know what I mean? Like, he needed somebody to be like make a plan for him and he was just yeah. making it up as he went along and so i was like well what if i drew something for or wrote something for you we could do something together uh and that sort of like got me out of the bars for at least a couple nights a week and that got him you know a focus and a direction to move in so we did a book called less than hero about okay. the sort of the gentrification of san francisco in 2004 there was this hero called the punk who had a brain injury and he would fight Oh boy, he it was just a it was a book we probably could not reprint today in today's climate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know the the big gag was a guy's colostomy bag would come loose and spray shit everywhere, and you know he the the punk could only get his brain hemorrhage under control if he smoked a bunch of meth, and you know he would take a, a break in the middle of a fight and take a shit on the street. It's just sort of autobiographical. Was yeah, it yeah, it really was. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> yeah. but he and I, so Tony and I pretty much realized that we could do this uh, and that we didn't have to – we just didn't have any direction. We, you ever meet creative people that aren't actualizing their talent? They're really yeah, frustrated, yeah. right? They yeah. just don't know what to do. So anytime I meet someone now who's frustrated as a creative person, I'm like they're just not doing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all need an outlet to stay sane, right? I, I sort of envy people that are in a union, like a, a refrigerator repairman or a garbage man or something. Like you know what you're doing every day, but when you're a creative person, you have to invent the world from scratch every day, mm-hmm. and it can be mercurial, right? It can make you fucking batshit. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Like I, I don't have a factory to go to. I'm not making like divots. Uh, I would be a relief if I could some days. I would know what I'm doing every day. Yeah. Uh, so my origin story is uh, I was raised on comic books, became a, you know, a, a drunk. I met Tony and he and I sort of picked each other up, dusted each other off and started making comic books together. So I've been collaborating with Tony since 2002. OK. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, so where like, did Sucker come from with him? Because that's was that uh, you've been obviously been working together for a while and you just did, did a lot of the ideas formatting themselves into that or. Yeah, we, um, you know what happened with Suckers? We did a book called, we did Less Than Hero, and then we did a graphic novel called First Moon, uh, which won a Zurich Award, which helped us out a little bit. And then we did okay. another graphic novel called Continuity. Uh, and then, so we that we did three books, like, back to back to back. And then we, we started Sucker, like, in 2007. And we just got burned out on each other. We, we did the classic mistake. We moved in together in the same flat. Right. Yeah. Uh, so then we just became like domestic partners, you know, it was, it was, we were like arguing over who we, who's peanut butter. And once you're living with somebody, you know what it, it's like, you, you stop fucking, right? You move in with someone <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't want to, you want to fuck other people all of a sudden. Yeah. So Tony and I moved this in together. True. Yeah. And Sucker, <laughs> Sucker just went on the wayside and then we partnered with uh, John Hebink to ink the book. And then he had health issues and the whole thing just sort of. We, we just got burned out. We needed time apart. And then that time apart just got longer and longer and longer. And then Tony left the country. He was living in Mexico and he was just off the grid. So 
But at a certain point, uh, like a mutual friend of ours was like, you know, you keep talking about how you want to work with Tony. Tony keeps talking about how he wants to work with you. Uh, like we were just both in this space at this point. Like, hey, let's pick this book up. How much of it is done? And quite a bit of it was done. So okay. the, like the first – like every other page was done in 2007 and then every other page was done in 2016. Um, <laughs> but once we got the engine to go, like we're more mature now. We're settled. I'm married. He's – you know, he's – we're just – better collaborators and we're better to each other it used to be you know in the early days we would disagree about something go to the pub get drunk and punch each other in the face and that was like our company meeting <laughs> the board meeting the yeah, board yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would yeah get a like a bowl of pretzels or a peanuts and spit the shells at me and then i'd pop them in the face and then we're on the floor wrestling <laughs> the floor of a gross disgusting bar <laughs> You know, maybe someone steals my jacket while we're on the floor. It was just a mess. You know, we were just uh, we were really wild. So we sort of like trained each other how to uh, be good collaborators. Nice. So for those that haven't read Sucker, shame, firstly, shame on them. But did you want to just give a little bit of so it's two issues so far, is it? Do you want to give a little overview of it? Sure. Sucker is about the last vampire and his war against the pharmaceutical industry that wants to capture him uh, and create put immortality in a pill. Right. Okay. So tonally wise, it's um, it's a sort of disgusting, yeah, biker <laughs> gang feel, you know, sort of thing to it, isn't it? It's uh, um, it's a, it's an R. Uh, what would you call it? An R-rated comic, out. I suppose. I would say, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm not doing a good job of describing it. It is a grindhouse vampire. Yeah. Epic. Yeah. Uh, so it takes place great. Through- it takes place in a world after the existence of vampires has been exposed and vampires have been hunted to near extinction. And they thought they got them all, uh, but they missed one. They missed this one perverted guy uh, from the 70s, this one sister fucker. See, he comes out of hibernation. Uh, he discovers he now has the power of all the previous vampires. He's not just one vampire now. So I wanted to play with the idea that, you know, when there's like a community – and they get whittled down. And then there's just two people that speak this rare native language. And when they go, that language goes with them, right? Yeah, so I want to yeah. do that with vampirism, that it is this sort of collective energy. And it has now been distilled to one evil motherfucker. So in trying to wipe out vampires, they've actually made like the worst one. They've siphoned all that evil into one vessel. Um, and he's a pervert. And everyone in it is awful. It's an awful, gross, disgusting world. Uh, and it's hard to know who to root for, but it is also gleefully fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's some great there's some great dialogue. One of my favorites in the second issue was I haven't I need another drink. I haven't had enough to drive yet. <laughs> so it's just that's fairly typical of a lot of the dialogue in it, which I think is really good. Yeah, God dear. Uh, yeah. It, you know, life is absurd. And <laughs> this, this is a book like the tone. You're either going to go with the tone of this or you're not. But I don't want to do another self-serious <laughs> vampire book. Yeah, you know, like that Anne Rice horse shit. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what I was just about to say. Yeah, if, yeah, we're if, past that, aren't we? We're yeah, past if, the Anne Rice. If you're going to sell your soul for immortality, there has to be a cost to that. So these dashing, you know, um, morally conflicted vampires, it's dull. It's dull as shit. Yeah. Mm. So we don't yeah, want to. Goth is it. over, my friend. We yeah. Don't <laughs> we don't. Yeah. Jason, yeah. Well, human wise. Bella yeah. Lugosi is still dead. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you kind of like the the humor in your books? Like, there's a lot of comics we read, and it, the humor just falls absolutely flat. But you've got yeah. you've got it. Where does that come from? Well, it falls. Humor is really subjective, right? So that humor mm. that you say is falling flat. Uh, mm. There's some boring motherfucker out there who loves it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you guys are true. dark. You guys are dark. Like there is a, a dark sense of humor that's really hard to land. But if you're true to yourself, I'm not trying. This is me all the time. This is my sense of humor. Mm, yeah. I'm not trying to cast a wide net, right? They say mm. comics are for everybody, but not every comic is for everybody. You know, this is not a book that I can give to my students. I teach a couple nights a week, and uh, I'm not giving them sucker because I want to stay employed. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, I get you. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, it is... but, it, but it is CD and it is sort of it's a book you don't see anymore. This really has like an 80s sort of flavor to it yeah. where we weren't concerned about how it's going to trend on Twitter. You know, the book doesn't sell well enough for people to be outraged to even know to be upset about it. So um, with that, yeah. it, does that give you a certain amount of freedom in that sense though? You know, you can really take the seatbelt off and just think, well, fuck it, we're going to do whatever we want to do. 
you know. No one gives no one gives a fuck about me, and you're right. That is very freeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to tell you, Jason. We've all we've all recently done comics that are pretty close to the edge, and the only way we got away with it is because not many people read them. <laughs> we, we're still sort of expecting the backlash to come, and it still hasn't come yet. We're a bit disappointed, you know. There's a bit of that going on. I think with comics yeah. these days. Yeah. No one cares if we're alive or dead. Yay, we're free. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite liberating though to tell those stories. You know what I mean? Just kinda of like this is what I this is the stories I want to tell. And here yes. it is. This if you is don't it. like it. So and I'm off. not trying to I'm not trying to be outrageous. I don't no. think I don't think I'm coming from a bad place, right? There's the idea of like um I'm not punching down on any single person. I'm not saying no. let's make fun of the in horror movies especially, right? You can tell the author's intent. You can tell if they don't like a certain segment of the community. You can tell if they don't have a high opinion of women. Um, we're sort of taking the piss on everybody and everything. Yeah. So there yeah. is a there is a theme to the book uh, about the commodification of you know pharmaceuticals and human lives and the cost of that. But we don't. We're, it's not a preachy book. You no. know, it's, it's the basis to have a conversation and have a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, and it's just uh, – you don't see books like this. And it's the type of book – I always do books that I want to pick up off the shelf and discover and go, holy shit, how'd this get made? Yeah. Yeah. You will write something you find fun, haven't you? There's always yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. And and ultimately, I might be the only motherfucker reading it, so I better <laughs> love it. <laughs> well, there's definitely going to be a few people reading it after this. I mean, yeah. there's, there's certain pages – when you say you pick up a book and you look through it, you've always got to have that – there's always that one moment during a, a like a flick through it, whether it be a, a book from the shelf or a PDF or something. There's always going to be one moment where you go, hold on, hold on. I know exactly yeah. what we're getting here. Um, and Sucker definitely has that, especially when it comes to – and this is one of the most important things in horror – the deaths. Now, mm-hmm. there, there's a few deaths that really – um, I was like, shit. They they go here. I I'm in. Um, one of them is a beautiful um, double page splash of someone uh, just getting their face absolutely annihilated, which was mm-hmm. gorgeous. And oh another, yeah, sucker two. Yeah, yeah and uh, and another one um, which was also from sucker two, fairly fairly um, soon on, was um, how do I describe it, gents? As delicately as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's a death that you... Um, it's it's not glorified. It's not right in your face like some um, sort of lesser or cheaper books would do. But the intent is there and it's impactful. You don't... One of the classic things, you don't see anything gruesome, but the impact is felt from that yes. murder. Oh, you're talking about when we eat the baby? That's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the one. The baby oh, eats the baby. It's just a baby. <laughs> yeah. we've, we've got um, a political party over here called the Tories, and they do that anyway most weeks. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's quite, quite acceptable here. Yeah. Here's the yeah. thing. That baby could have grown up to be like the next Hitler. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know. Okay, yeah. so, so basically, as long as you put... Um... Baby Hitler's in your books. You can just eat as many as you want. Listen, I don't think I think that's too high a line. I think you need to say something like Adam Sandler, someone like that. You know what I mean? I'm not. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't have to yeah. be Hitler. Could have been the next yeah. Ben Affleck. There you go. <laughs> I don't wipe them out when they're young. Yeah, the big thing. Honestly, I haven't heard a, a single gripe about us eating a baby. Now, here's the thing about eating babies: they taste like chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, there you go. I've got so many titles for this week's episode. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, he's, the, he's the bad guy, as it were. Yeah, he's exactly. supposed to do bad things. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're not telling yeah. him to eat babies. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if, I mean, from we're the not, synopsis, right? you you got like this vampire fighting against a ph- pharmaceutical company. You know, when you hear that, you think, well, maybe this is the you know another one of those vampires we root for. Uh, but a scene like that, and you're like, nah, this guy's a nah. prick. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the other shenanigans. He That's a step too well. far for you, huh? No, 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 no. Put more in it. And especially that haircut of his. Oh, my life. That haircut of his is marvellous. It's actually it's actually the haircut I've currently got at the moment because I can't get to a hairdresser's or a barber's. Because you're it's, a baby. Uh, ah, finally, yeah. you admit to going to a hairdresser's. I knew you did. <laughs> look, it, it takes a lot to look this good. Fucking guy. <laughs> The, um, and I, just slightly moving on, I noticed in Sucker One, one of the pinups was done by Greg Hinkle. Was he yeah. a mate of yours already? Was he, Jason? Or? Was he was he mine already? Was he a mate of yours? Was he a friend of yours? Oh already? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had done the Rattler at that point already. I met Greg probably oh, okay. 2010. We were both living in San Francisco, and we were both working the door for the. I don't know if you know the Isotope Comic Lounge in San Francisco. Oh it's no, a, I do. yeah. yeah. 
it's a comic book shop in San Francisco, and they throw big events. Um, so, but they need, you know, they need a doorman. So Greg and I would uh, take turns working the door we met, and he was going to the Academy of Art at that point. And we did a, uh, we worked on an anthology together, and I wrote a short piece for him about uh, all these baby pieces that come together in the sewer and form a giant fetus aborted baby thing. That... <laughs> I think we need to get a psychologist on the line. I'm going to tell you, I've got some other thing. <laughs> it was called Baby Talk. Uh, I, uh, you know, I can send you a PDF of it, but it's one of those Please stories see. that will probably let go out of print. But we had a great time working on it. Uh, so then we started working on Sucker. I'm sorry, the Rattler. And again, like he he graduated school, and I think he just didn't really. He had a professional style, but he didn't have a professional pace yet. He took on too much work, and it looked like we weren't going to do the book. Uh, and then by 2015, he had sort of uh, gotten it together. He got his practice together and was like, you know, is now working at a professional pace. He he had got out of school and agreed to do too much work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you, this nothing happens, right? You say yes when you're a freelancer. You always say yes to work because you never know. Yeah. Uh, but with an illustrator, you have to be a little bit more um, tactical in what you take on because there's only so much time. A writer can work on multiple things, but a, an illustrator can't. It's easy being a writer, isn't yeah. it? It's easy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, rupees. to go from a, like a few pages in an anthology to uh, – what is the rather? Is it like 110 pages? I can't remember now. Is it something uh, like that? It's 96 pages of story content. That's a, that's yeah. a big shout. Now, I'm I'm guessing that he'd already towards the end of that he'd already started on Airboy because I know that James Robinson appears in the last few pages, isn't he? He does. Yeah, he knew we knew that he was working with James, so right. that was just supposed to be like someone at the hospital. Yeah, uh, and we we changed that scene around a little bit to get some of our friends in there. So we got James mm-hmm. in there, and we got Airboy in there. Yeah, he, he, there's a copy of Airboy on the nightstand. So ah. we we were joking that uh, it's all part of the Hinkle verse. <laughs> you know the thing I love about I admire most about Greg is he draws himself with a huge dong, doesn't he? He, does. he is not humble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think they call that uh, realism. <laughs> he's into photo realism. <laughs> so was that was that something you worked up together, the Rattler? Because it might it, we absolutely loved that book. We both, mm-hmm. me and Vince, both read it today, and. Um, as, as a long as a long book, I didn't look up, and it's got a lot of twists and turns in it. It's, it's a it's a hell of a work. Hmm. Thank you. It's it's probably yeah. my favorite thing that we've done. Yeah, uh, it's uh, that, it's uh, so the the twists. When you say twists in in a book, sometimes you can see them coming a mile off. Um, no, I didn't have to think about that one. The main yeah, one, didn't have, yeah, the yeah. main one. And we're going to try uh, and talk about this without spoiling this, anything. So. Dan hasn't read it yet, even no. though he's got it lined up to read next. <laughs> but um, there are moments in this book that you can't telegraph um it's a wonderful character piece it's also very very dark still got a sense of humor yeah. to it um and the thing that fascinated me about it because i i bought the collection on comicsology and then just basically just rinsed through it in one go yeah and then yeah. yeah the the text piece at the end because it's it says it's sort of based on a true story and when i read the page of what it's actually sort of based on that kind of creeped me out more than the book itself mm-hmm. um do you want to just because I, it's essentially a scene that you see towards the you know inspired one of the early scenes of the book. Yeah, this is uh, the opening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, 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 do you want to talk a little bit about that because it fascinated me and also terrified me. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. It, 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 well, let me back it up for Dan. So probably like uh, it was years ago. It was probably like around uh, I think it was after nine eleven. So it was, must have been like around Christmas two thousand one. Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of mine. Her, uh, her name's Stephanie. She and I went on a road trip Christmas Eve. Her girlfriend was out of town, and uh, you know I was just in my heavy drunk phase. So I was alone in my sad little building, and we went on a road trip <laughs> and we ran out of gas on a little oh. country road. the The gas meter didn't work. The and it was like uphill, and uh, you know I'm not great with details. I don't remember where the town was. I just talked to Stephanie the other day. We're still good friends, but um, so it was. It was nighttime, dark, windy road. Uh, you know, sort of more of a rural part of California. So we pushed the car to the side of the road because we didn't want to get hit by another car coming around the corner. And then we thought, well, where do we go? What do we do? Like there was a restaurant that we had eaten at a couple, uh, you know, not long before, maybe a half hour before. We thought we could walk back to the restaurant, 
or do we wait for a car to pass? It's Christmas Eve. I'm not expecting, you know, a lot of traffic out here. And a truck goes by and it stops. And this guy gets out. And it's a pretty sturdy truck. And he's looking at me in my very skinny jeans and my nails were painted black. I was going through my own goth phase at the time. <laughs> you know, uh, I look like, uh, you know, I look like a hustler, really. And, <laughs> but I was probably like 130 pounds, you know really skinny and uh he's looking at me in the car and her and he's like well you guys have really gotten yourselves into it and you know i never thought to ask his name I never, we were so grateful that someone had stopped to help us that in hindsight we let a lot of red flags pass mm, right but, uh, anyway so he was like okay there's a filling station not far from here that i can i can tow you to where you can get gas and we're like oh thank god you're our savior you know we thought we were gonna spend christmas on the side of the road in a car He's like, but you sort of wedged in the side of the road here. What I'm going to do is I have a chain or I'm sorry, I have a rope in the back of my car. I can tie the rope from my truck to your bumper and pull you out of the out of the ditch that you're in. But you'll need to push. Right. Which should have been the first red flag, because at 130 pounds, I couldn't push. You know, uh, (laughs) I'm not like, you know, physically intimidating. So I'm behind the car. So he's like, okay, you push the car. And Stephanie, you steer the car out of the ditch, and then I'll, I'll get you out of the ditch, and then I'll stop. We'll get everybody in the car, and I'll I'll take you to the filling station. Oh, thank God! You know what I mean? Someone's taking control of this. I wasn't going to yeah. do it. She wasn't going to do it. So I'm behind the car, and I'm pushing, uh, uh, pushing my whole weight. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like pushing, really pushing my bony little ass into it. Uh, and he, you know, he pulls the car out of the ditch, and then he hits the gas and just starts taking off. And then I'm standing there in the road looking at my friend being abducted, and I think, oh, well, I just walked right into that, didn't I? This guy was just going to take off with my friend in the car. So she's honking and, like, you know, um, uh, like, you know, steering the wheel to the left and the right, and he's just taking off with her. And I'm, you know, doing my best to run up the hill. Uh, but like I said, you know, I was a 130 pound drunk. What the fuck am I going to do? So she was actually smarter than all of us. She pulled the emergency brake and the rope snapped. Uh, right. So she then rolls back a little bit, gets out of the car and runs towards me. Uh, and we like run to the side of the road and we're like, going to just take off. And we're sort of crouching behind, a, you know, some shrubbery looking at him. Uh, so he stopped the truck up the hill, got out and stared at us for a while and then got back in his car and drove away. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Are you, um, are you and him now a couple, or is this... Uh... <laughs> him and I? Yeah. 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 Well, I paid good money for that. So uh, <laughs> we were like... So we, we stayed back there for a bit, and then we're like, fuck it. We're going to go back to the restaurant we were at before. So we, mm, we, we, right. run down, we run down the hill. We get back to this town. This little, there was like a little pub bar and a hotel that we had dinner at. And we walked in, and... Sure enough, there's like two sheriff's deputies uh, having dinner, and we're like, "Oh my god, this guy!" And he did this, and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, "Yeah, that's great, kids." Uh, you know, they, they looked at me, and I look like you know, I look like an ass hooker from the city. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Just sit down and relax, and we'll take you to get some gas in a minute, right?" So they finished their meal, and then they drove us to like their gas station. Like the cops had their own gas station, so they got like a little thing of gas, came back, filled us up. And said, you know, don't come back to wherever we are. <laughs> Pretty oh, much. God. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> Jesus. And, Jesus. Uh, yeah, so we went back that night, and I had the worst food poisoning of my life from that place so that we ate. So I'm on the floor of this bathroom, puking and shitting my guts out. And I kept thinking, like, okay, who drives around with all that rope in the back of their car, in the back of their truck? <laughs> yeah. But what if he had a chain and not a rope? You know, I didn't want to say that to my friend, but, like, if he had a chain... She'd be yeah, gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I was young at the time, and it was just one of those – you're going through uh, – every, every weekend you do something wild and crazy. And it was like a story we told people. Like, isn't that crazy that happened? Yeah. And, then, you know, it's one of those things you just push out of your brain. Yeah. So yeah. Many, many, many years later, she, uh, she and her wife and her son, uh, who's a redhead, and I'm a redhead, and she's a redhead – uh, and everybody thinks I was the donor. I was not. They didn't. And... <laughs> Get that on here. Get on, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. on record. Yeah. They, they didn't want mine. Uh, <laughs> but um, so they came to visit, and I'm playing with her kid, and my wife's meeting her kid, and we're all eating this dinner and laughing. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, do you remember that thing that happened? 
like 10 years ago? And she's like, yeah. I sometimes think about how fucking crazy that was. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I think about it sometimes too. But I realized how I would think about it. And this is really like what made the story. Like at that point, I didn't have the idea for the book. But I kept thinking like, what would it do to me? Like who would I have been over those 10 years if I had to watch her? Because I was standing on the road as someone yeah. drove away with my friend. And I was like, oh, fuck. And luckily we got her back and everything was okay. Yeah. But what if we didn't? So I kept thinking, like, what would it do to me? What would my career have been like? What would my life have been like? And then I realized, like, how selfish I was about it. I was thinking, me, 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 me. Not, like, what would have happened to her or her family. <laughs> uh, I was totally like, oh, yeah, that's that's the story. This guy who's trying to fix this event, but he's made it all about himself. Mm. Uh, yeah. Then I yeah. thought about, like, you know, the emotional security of young guys and relationships and how... Because he kind um, of makes his whole business out of it. He makes a lot yeah. of money out of it. Doesn't he? Yeah, he does. So, you know, you always ask your, your characters, what happens if they get what they actually want? This guy is brokenhearted, and it's his business model to be brokenhearted. What if he could get her back? What would that do to him? Yeah. So that, that was the idea, is like maybe he could actually get what he wants. Maybe he doesn't really want what he thinks he wants. So if it um, was me, if it happened to me, I would definitely, because I'm quite, I don't know if you know this, Jason, but I'm quite annoying. I would definitely be saying to my I would definitely be saying to my friend, How much did you pay that trucker to get you away from me? Was I that annoying? <laughs> yeah, uh so yeah, so that was the that was the thing is like, oh that's that's my hook into this story is that the guy is just really taking this tragedy and making it for himself. So here in the States we have this thing, I grew up with this show called America's Most Wanted. Yeah, yeah, we've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's yeah. A bit, and this the guy who hosts the show, he really he did have a terrible tragedy in in his life. His son was abducted and killed. So, you know, he's law enforcement works with him. He is someone who is, you know, trying to catch criminals and has made his his career to better the world. Yeah. But at the time, if you went to his website and looked at the America's Most Wanted website, there was a lot of pictures of him like posing on a motorcycle in front of like a brick wall as if He's actually going out there and throwing a net over people, Batman mm -hmm. style. Yeah. And I thought, like, also, like, how, where, where does the marketing end and reality begin? You know, the, yeah. you, you, we all tell ourselves a story about who we are and what we do. And I thought, if this guy were to ever break bad, if the guy, Greg Walsh, if he were ever to, like, start actually becoming a vigilante, I don't know that the cops would give a shit. Yeah. You know, like how much how much rope do we give certain people? So I, I wanted to play with that too, the sort of celebrityness of being like wounded that way. Yeah, I think what you're doing as well is what you've described around the um, the the abduction of the girl at the start is um, that's only the first fifteen twenty pages of that book. It it really goes off on a number of sort of story. It launches itself off on a number of stories that are just brilliant, man. Because you have two strands, so you have him on a mission, and you have his assistant and her pal on a mission as well, don't you? Sort of two mm -hmm. stranded, but they sort of they interlock so well. I have Thanks. to say, yeah, no, really nicely, yeah. Because at one point, I remember there's a sort of switch and bait moment where you think he's going to a certain house. There's a knock on the door, and it's them at the door, and stuff like that. Very clever, man. Really good stuff. That was yeah. very Thank cinematic you. as well. That it, yeah, the whole, the whole thing just felt like it, you walk your way through it. You, yeah, you live your way through it, which is always a, a sign of good fiction. I think is where you, 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 you're feeling that walk to the door, and you're feeling mm. that knock on the door, and it's but it's switching baits you because it's something else when the door is opened. Very good. Yeah, really oh. like it. Yeah. Well, you know, I do. Um, I try. I do model all the scripts after like the three act screenplay structure. Right. Uh, okay. Because I feel like that keeps things moving. Mm. Yep. Like there's there's a pace yeah. there's a pace to it, and with comic books, there's a like a brevity of storytelling. You only have so many pages, right? You can't figure it out on the page. You need to figure it out on the script first, okay. like the, the pacing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, every eight pages, there's a cliffhanger in that book. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, we read it as, as a collection. Was it released as one collection, or was it single issues to begin with? So, you know, I, I hedged my bets, and we made – if you that could break into four single issues, but it was never released that way. Right. Oh, wow. So I always sort of like the um, – the walking dead trades because they don't break it up with the cover yeah, they just blast yeah, like right through yeah. so you're never yeah. you don't know when to stop and then you can't stop reading yeah. right so when i was in my big fandom of that i would buy i remember buying a collection and just sitting in my college classroom and just like couldn't put it down yeah. it doesn't let go and that's what i wanted to do i didn't want to you know horror is really 
horror in comic books and that feeling of dread is really hard to establish. So if you were to break that into four individual experiences, like you might be reading The Rattler issue three in between an issue with Superman and Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Like if I can hold that, create that tone and hold that tone, then I don't want to let you go. I want to hold you for as long as possible. Mm. And to have, yeah, when, when an you think of that point. continuous storytelling as well, it it does it changes the way you write or you you um, figure out a page layout and stuff. If you want it to read continuously, because with with a lot of comics as well, when you pick up like the first page of like issue two, in some ways there's a recap of you know a, a very brief recap of way you know if you didn't read issue one, right. um, but. You, you've almost got, dare I say it, the Netflix model when it's a continuous story because you don't have to give everyone that recap. You can just keep you can keep the train rolling, can't you? On you know you don't yeah. have to worry about like oh here's what happened in last issue. Here here we go. You can just keep rolling, and, and that's I think that that's why the Rattler you know even though it's about a hundred pages, we just absolutely breeze through it. Yeah. You know, and do, do you know what I like? The fact is, it starts as a black and white book and it ends up as a black and white and a red book. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a genius. sucker for that. I am an absolute <laughs> yeah. sucker for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's all Greg. Yeah, yeah Greg yeah. is uh, a master of that. There are scenes where he's also really good. He doesn't get, first of all, that, that he's even available to work with me tells you something's wrong with the comic book industry. I agree. <laughs> not, not, that, not that he's working with you, Matt, but I agree that he's a, he's one, he's one. easily top 10 artists for me at the moment. He's, I've got to tell you, since, yeah, since Airboy, we fucking went nuts for Airboy. We loved yeah. it, man. So good. Yeah, so. yeah, he's really good. Yeah. So one of the things he does that I really really love is his facial grammar. If you look at the like the the physicality of his characters and like the emotional content of their faces, you can take almost all the dialogue out because then it becomes redundant yeah. and mm-hmm. just let his story his physical storytelling um breathe and move the story forward. He's such a good um he's such a good actor mm. with his characters. Yeah. Does that There's free a very you up when you're writing? Want... Sorry, Tony. I'm Does sorry? that free you up with your you. write, writing though because when you have that sort of talent you know that he's going to actually smash out on the pages. You have that confidence to not put so many words on the page. Just mm-hmm. you know, you can just describe a couple of things. You know, how much description do you give him of panels and things like that? Not a lot. I give him like the emotional content of the panel. Hmm. Uh, so it's, it's less camera description, less like you know, three quarter over the shoulder. Like he doesn't need that. He just needs to know the emotional content. Like this person is hearing the worst thing they've ever heard in their life, or hmm. like the last page of the Rattler. He's you know screaming out for a vo- hoping to hear a voice that he'll never hear again and then he takes that emotionality uh, and puts it into the character so cool. yeah nice. not a lot of not a lot of description i don't have to i give him the skeleton of the story mm. uh, and he, he fills it in yeah. for those who haven't seen his work i'd compare him to um tony moore i think it's about the nearest yeah. um artist I'd, I'd i'd give him uh he's a little bit different but especially i noticed that in the rattler more so than in the recent book um yeah, is that that's there's a there's a line between um, realism and caricature, and he he's he he manages to be full of um, cartooning and caricature and stuff, but still a bit, a bit it's strange. Still got... Like when you have that cartooning, and you know, sometimes it seems more cartoony, but it makes it more real. Does that make? Yeah, it sense? does. Yeah, you, yeah, it does. Know, yeah, because you can you can stretch the emotions out. Yeah. You can you the, the yeah definitely yeah because yeah. there's well, moments of the rattler where you just got a real weight to it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah, and there's moments of the Rattler where um, it's dark subject matter. You really have to get the sense that someone is on the edge of sanity, and you can see right. it just by like looking in someone's eyes in that book. Because there's a lot of crazy in that book, people. Trust me. We, you know, <laughs> yeah. the other the other yeah. thing that we we did was that we tried to put the perspective in places that the human eye is not. Okay. So, like um, like lo- extreme low angles, looking up. Um, there's one point where he's opening up a wall and we did it from the inside of the wall looking out mm. um, from the back of closets. We tried to put the perspective in places that you wouldn't normally as a human see, right? So there's like um, every sort of perspective you choose should elicit something in in the reader. You've got a sequence which that's basically shot through a camera. It's like them, yes. them watching a film of it later, which is very clever. Yeah. We did that because uh, it was it didn't fit earlier. Like when it happens in this story sequentially, yeah, there was there was too much else going on, and we needed something to happen later. Um, okay, interesting. And also, yeah. I wanted to be like, how did he get out of the basement? Maybe you don't know. And then we do tell, we fill that in later. Yeah, I got that um, completely. Yeah, no, that that was really nicely done. And also, one of my favorite pages is when that sort of redneck. Can you say redneck in America? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Something. 
yeah, fine. When you <laughs> with the, when the redneck couple say, um, "Let's make a snuff video," mm-hmm. and I'm like, "They're brilliant. That's like <laughs> yeah. the best scene ever." <laughs> <laughs> That's your favourite scene, Tony. It is, yeah. And there's a bit yeah. of an extra. You added some scenes that you took out at the end where they go looking for what masks they're going to wear. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. we had some. We cut some scenes out for pacing. I really wanted it to move really, really quick. I never wanted it to drag. Because if it drags, you're going to sort of question some of the logistics of it. Like, wait, he's doing what? They're do- Why are they here? If you keep oh, things yeah. really moving, then you're invested in the story. You're not asking the mechanics of where they are, how they got there. But, yeah, we had some extra scenes. And then Greg, you know, for extra stuff later, he drew them. Oh, cool. Nice one. Oh, but wow. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to insert them because they were not – it's not the experience I wanted you to have. Hmm. Cool. And then what was the book after that? Was it? Did you go straight into um, commissions, nocturnal commissions, or is it? Did you have books between that? Greg had books between that. He did the Rattler, and then he did Airboy, and then he did Black Cloud, which is a series. Yes. Not many yep. people. Um, I don't think a lot of people discovered that one, but it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I, read, I read some of it the other day. Funny enough, yeah, yeah it's good I, stuff. I couldn't tell you what it's about, but it looks great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, you did. Um, was it? You've had a raft of books out in the last two years. You did shorthand about an eighty-year-old detective, didn't you? Which I have not. I have to admit to not having read, but you should read that, short, that shorthand. Great shorthand uh, was done a long time ago. That was done probably right. two thousand eleven. Okay, um, but it, it was one of those books where that was the first time, or maybe the second time I quit comics. I did that book with uh, Rasan Ikadale, and I thought this is the best thing I've ever done. Um, surely somebody will publish this. And we sent it around, and everyone thought it the material was too strange or too dark or too weird. Uh, it's about a twelve. It's about a twelve-year-old kid. Uh, I don't. It's got a. It's got a big twist to it, but right. it, it is about a um, a twelve-year-old detective who is prematurely aged. And, <laughs> right. Uh, the the idea that I had was that, you know, we all sort of mythologize or mythologize like our past or our youth um and here is a a kid who was born old and he's never going to have like this the youth so he lives and identifies as an old man he doesn't pretend to be a 12 year old with with pajeria he just walks around and acts like an 80 year old man uh (laughs) and talks about like his great detective career that he had when he was younger uh and then he gets out of the house and goes on an adventure and rekindles his detective career that he that he never actually had, and, and he goes undercover at an old folks' home, and hilarity ensues. But um, the, the the notes I kept getting from editors is you can't do a comedy about a dying child. <laughs> I, I mean, me. you know, why why do people keep drawing these lines? Um... Yeah, gatekeepers. <laughs> Yeah, and here's the thing: like, <laughs> like if, if Spider-Man was born in what 1945, like, how old is Peter Parker really? You know, yeah. he's an, like, I don't have to show the kid dying, but yeah. the idea that we we all should be um, seen is how we want to be seen. Really, is the, is the plot of it? He, if he wants to be an 80 year old man, uh, former detective, then we should allow him to be that, and people should be seen and met the way they want to be met. And if all the stories take place in the year 2005, then so be it. I don't. I don't want to see a kid die on on page. That's not something I'm excited about. Yeah. As many as many babies are eaten and sucker. It's not like a big. <laughs> that's not the hill I want to die on. But yeah, people. I I, I felt that it was a feel good story, um, yeah. about owning one's story. But yeah, I mean, Gate- I th- I, th- I think it just sounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't understand. Strange when you hear when you read that you know you told us that synopsis that just sounds sounds interesting it sounds like something that a lot of certainly a lot yeah. of our listeners would want to read something different. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. seeing seeing a kid die on screen. Have you seen the remake of Karate Kid? I've, I'd have gone through with that. <laughs> <seeing it now. laughs> Uh, you know, I missed that cinematic masterpiece. Yeah. And, he's, <laughs> and he's the kung fu kid. They didn't call it the Karate Kid, Tony. Come on. Oh, did they? Okay, no, sorry. No, 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 no. You, 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 you can't uh, make genius twice. When it comes to that. <laughs> um, but you know, going and we're talking about shorthand there, and it shows. You know, obviously we've we've made jokes about like how dark your stories are, and like you know how you like to step on the dark side. But there is there is a lightness of touch in there as well, and that that will bring Definitely. us round to nice. nocturnal commissions, yeah. because mm-hmm. even though that is a world that's seemingly you know, I, I'm guessing you have a love for the universal monsters. 
Oh yes, yes, yeah. sir, I do. Yeah, it is. It is positively dripping off off this comic book, um, and it's a gorgeous looking book. But the thing, one, I mean, normally in our WhatsApp group, the ACP WhatsApp group, we're sharing pages backwards and forwards. Oh, have you seen this? Have you seen this? When it came to this book, a lot of the time we were sharing dialogue. You know that we were oh, yeah, talking. We're actually, yeah, we were, yeah, this is yeah. the yeah. one we were talking about. You know, this moment made us laugh because th- this is a book about monsters. Well, actually. Take it away. Tell us what Nocturnal Commissions is. Wow. Um, you know, you guys will probably do a better job than I will, but um, I will say Nocturnal Commissions is it's the X-Files meets the Monster Squad when a werewolf, a vampire, and a zombie open a detective agency. <laughs> Fucking just... <laughs> Just uh, yeah. sign everyone well, up. The, the, the crux of that is that they're not they're not very good either. That's the good thing <laughs> yeah. I like about it. Yeah. They're they're just like making it up as they go along. Um, that's that's the good you, thing about it to me. Yeah, they're not. It's, it's not like, like super action. Word. Yeah, yeah. But aren't we all making it up as we go along? Mm, Too yeah. right, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. true. And much yeah. like the rest of the real world, um, you know, this team, as it were, is an exercise in putting up with the people that you're. I have to work alongside because it is um yeah. what like you, you don't have to describe but there, there is the shorthand that pardon the pun um that everyone <laughs> has with you know vampires werewolves you know even zombies and things like that um and, and you play off that but you can already tell that there there's a world you have your own sort of vampire logic mm-hmm. you have your own werewolf logic um mm. this is a book where one of the main guys is he's a, just a cool looking werewolf even though like his his sense of smell may be not as good as he thinks it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's my fa- <laughs> my favourite scene is when he tells yeah, him what she had for breakfast. Yeah. That scene, I love that scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, but there's also there's other werewolves in it which look and feel very differently. So you know, mm. before you, this is a fun just sort of adventure comic, as it were. Yeah. Um, with the Universal Monsters vibe, but you must have you know, do you have like a sort of a world bible, as it were, for you know these monsters and creatures going forward? We do, and then we throw it out. We stay real loose because you don't know when you're doing. I wanted to keep it on an island. Most of this takes place on a single island, so mm-hmm. I wanted to bring these characters together and let them play with each other. But they talk about a larger world. Yeah. Uh, and if there's a theme to this book, it's about fractured communities sort of coming together. And I wanted each of these guys to be an outsider in their own community. So uh, Bradford is an albino vampire. Uh, which makes which probably makes him unique among other vampires. So he can actually go out during the day. Um, and we also wanted to play with the tropes that go with vampires, right? They're all hypersexual and dark and brooding. And he's not interested in any of that. Nice. He's, he's very fussy. He's still in the same rent control department for 200 years. He's very well dressed, though. An amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's suit. very well dressed. Yeah. yeah. He's, so uh... he's, basically, he's basically English. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> The model was Tim Gunn. Oh, okay. Um, All right. From okay. Project Runway. Yeah, to, to make him, you know, we're so tired of, like, the vampires and leering at women and dark, wet, neon streets and fangs. Like, he, you know, some of the, um, he doesn't have his fangs bared on the cover. I, we didn't want to be super obvious with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, a, there's, probably, there's a visual sort of bit that I, I love that. He obviously sometimes you see a slight morphing of of him into a more vampiric sort of state, but then he'll go back yeah. to being normal again. I know there's a yeah, bit yeah. of a reveal later in the book, but um, you know it was something that I had to I had to double check some panels. It was like, does he look more monstrous there than he does? You know, just these little flashes <laughs> yeah. flashes of the yeah. monster underneath. Well, he's thirsty. Yeah, he can be a little thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there is a world beyond here. Absolutely. But we wanted to test the waters with this one in a sort of a controlled sort of pilot episode. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think there's a vampire community. I definitely think there's a werewolf community. Uh, I think there's mermaids. I think there's all any sort of thing that you can think of. They're out there, and they're just as fractious as the real world is uh, in absorbing these cultures. They talk about a Gorgon being stoned because they wouldn't let her play with her hair. Uh, <laughs> so I want to bring these guys together and then move them through a world that has to you know we all have to live alongside each other yeah so yeah so yeah it has shifted a little bit i wrote the second issue and i thought maybe it was too self-contained and there weren't it wasn't enough of the world um so there's a lot of places we could go from here but again like we would need either the the kickstarter and indiegogo would have to do 
a lot better than it has or a publisher would have to help us out. And with the current state okay. of the world, I don't mm-hmm. really – I can't count on a publisher. And for yeah, some... and I think Kickstarter's in a funny place at the moment as well, dude. Yeah, I think yeah. um, people don't know whether to spend money, do they? They don't want to spend money. With Kickstarter, you obviously pledge to something that the money gets taken out of your account so many days later. I think people are a bit wary of that at the moment. You know? Yeah. So I'm not really sure what to do with this next um, – and, and I'll be honest with you guys, I am networking poison. I feel like I, I, <laughs> I, I've been producing uh, high quality work that's as, as high quality as anything an image or dark horse or Oni. Yeah, man. Definitely. Um, yeah. But connecting it with a larger audience has always been uh, a struggle of mine. I don't know if it's me, if it's the work, if it's too weird. Uh, but I definitely have a voice. I think that's something that I, yeah. I have that unique value in that. I mean, this, guys... this is the this is the one book that I think um, this is. Ugh, I hate the term mainstream appeal, um, but this is this is the one that you know could cross uh, across yeah, into it's a, got that in spades. Yeah, 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 a wider market. Yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, th- sometimes you're better off going your own way, man. You, some publishers, I know. I mean, we get a lot of it through you know back lines to us. A lot of publishers don't pay you any money. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? No, they don't. Um, there's a lot of people out there who don't see a penny from getting a book published with a publisher, you know. Yeah. And I think, um, but the wider think world will think that just because you've got a publisher's name on it, then everyone's yeah. doing all right, don't they? We were yeah, we were talking yeah. about this what ten minutes before we started recording, weren't we, Vince? Mm. Literally about one publisher, and I think that's quite common with a lot of them these days. Sure. Sometimes you're better off doing this. We when we're friends with a couple of creators, and they they say, "No, go your own way, self-publish, best yeah. way to go." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. <sighs> It's the money thing, but it's also like if I want to build an audience, if I want to do this as a series, like I can do a one-off on my own, but yeah. it's it's exhausting. I've been yeah. self-publishing yeah. my own work for years, uh, but we did the Rattler through Image, and that helped open the door to a wider audience for me. Right. The issue is uh, I didn't really walk through that door. I sort of stumbled and fell down on the other side of it. Okay. <laughs> But I mean, from a, a Kickstarter, I think you make your own reputation as well. And certainly with your Kickstarter, it was what three weeks after the Kickstarter ended that I got a digital copy through. It was very quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, here's the other thing: is I, I have a philosophy around Kickstarter, which I don't kickstart books until they're done, because right. as yeah. soon as someone says, "Where's the book?" you have failed. You have yeah, blown it. You right. only. Where you go, if you fuck up on Kickstarter, you have nowhere to go, right? These are the diehard people that will be there for you if you treat them well. So mm. we did the Rattler originally as a Kickstarter in 2015, and okay. I still see those backers coming back for books. They still trust me. They yeah. still support me. They still support me on, on social media. Uh, you have an opportunity to, to create lifetime advocates for your work. I mean, that's the goal. So I may not have a huge audience, but I have a consistent audience that knows that I'm going to show up and I'll move. I'll do whatever it takes. Like, I'm going to deliver a book in a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. And we, t- I mean, I work for a comic publisher and, and we, we talked about this last week and we'll talk about it again now. But the way that you build your book's reputation and get the sales out there is by these days, especially is by building a community and then selling it. Right. Yeah, that's the way. So uh, that's, that, that's what Kickstarter allows you to do, I think. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's as much of a marketing platform as it is a sales yeah, platform, yeah, pre order platform. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I treat it like a pre order platform, which is may, maybe not how Kickstarter wants you to think of it. But imagine if I had the idea for Nocturnal Commissions and we did the Kickstarter, and now Greg and I have to make the book in this current environment. Yeah, uh, it, it would be late. Like people would be asking where it is. I don't want you to ask that. I take on all of the legwork of doing the book first because yeah. something always goes wrong in a creative endeavor. It always takes longer than you think it will. Um, you know, last spring I broke my hand. I broke my right. fist in a kickboxing match. So I couldn't, I couldn't do a whole lot of work for two months. Yeah. So I imagine if I did that while I was supposed to be producing a book. So I, I definitely think there's two different brains to the creative side of this. There is producing the work, writing it, working with the illustrator, lettering it, putting it in the InDesign, getting it ready to go, putting the, the barcode on it even. Yeah. Yeah. And, th- and then you mm-hmm. tell people, hey, I have a book. And then, all, yeah, then, then you just focus on selling the book and talking about the book. Yeah, publishing and sales and uh, yeah. promotion are the, are the big – are the 50% of it easily yeah. these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, so I parse them into two different actions. I create, right. then I sell it. Then I create, okay. and then I sell it. Um yeah, yeah, behind me right now, I've got a table with a scale, a printer, uh, hundreds of comic boxes, and yeah. you know, every every couple of days, I put a couple of boxes out for the postman to take away. You know, Good Sucker stuff, is pretty consistently selling still. Oh, nice. 
Yeah. yeah. So yeah. with um, yeah. when when conventions are actually a thing in the world, do you do those as well, or I can't get into conventions. Really? Why? No. Yeah, I can't. That's crazy. I get put on a wait list, and they never call me. Oh my like, god! Oh, if you take a year off, so I, I would do conventions sporadic, sporadically when I had something new. Um, and when I had the book through image, uh, you know, I could get a table. Sometimes I even got a table that was comped. But if you right. take a year or two off, you're starting from ground zero all over again. And it's exhausting mm-hmm. to be that present. Um, you know, it's, a lot of conventions, you just lose money. And I don't mind losing money if it's locally and I don't have to have a hotel and everything. But yeah. Greg and I yeah. did, the, did the Halloween 40th anniversary convention in Pasadena because I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. Yeah, so right. I went down there and, uh, you know, I was – Pleased, quite chuffed to only lose a thousand dollars doing that convention. <laughs> uh, well, if you ever make it to the UK, we know a few people. We'll put a word in. Good, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be on your yeah. couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, your bourbon. Yeah, yeah. There, there may be more condoms on the carpets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I hope Tony doesn't listen to this. <laughs> I'm going to send it to him. I have so many disgusting Tony stories, but I love him. He's like a brother to me. And yeah. now uh, we just went through it all and came out on the other side. So I'm really glad that he and I get to collaborate again because he sees things in a way that no one else does. Yeah. He knows where the bodies are buried. That's what you yeah. yeah. I mean, because yeah. he buried like... them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. I, I feel about your work in the same way I feel in music. I feel about Robin Hitchcock because it's great. Just people need to discover it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. There's that. There's that stuff. They like sucker. Is is that that cover? I a me of issue one. I bought it just off the cover. Oh, it's brilliant you. stuff, man. Really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just it's just sitting there, and there's so much rubbish out there yeah. that yeah. people just need. <laughs> Once people find stuff like this, they go, yeah. "Oh, I like yeah. this. This is good." Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, I need I need you to tell them because I can't. Uh, well, yeah. our listeners <laughs> are, are usually deliver in terms of picking up books. Once you know, if someone's yeah. done a good job of talking about their work, which I think you have with a plum, um, yes. then then the listeners go go forth and pick up the you know these book you know Jason's books because they are, it is great stuff. He's he's writing stuff that's very close to the the Autumn awesome Pod's heart, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, as if well you've got as... a Sunday afternoon, read The Rattler, like we did today. Yeah. One of my favourite reading experiences for ages. I roared through it. Yeah. And me and you were just messaging each other about it constantly. Yeah. yeah I think like, that was another yeah. that was another fucking hell, wasn't it? Message. Yeah, it was another fucking yeah. hell. Yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> there you go, yeah. two fucking hells <laughs> in one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. But where can people, you know, if people do want to check out the books and, and stuff, um, where can people go to find out, find more of your work? Well... I think nowadays you can go to Comixology. I have a, a publishing arm on Comixology, Polite Strangers. Is that is that, a, is that the name for? I wanted to ask you about this because that's quite an interesting name for for your publisher. And I've noticed it on, on all your books. How did that? How did you think of that name? Because I'm like a curmudgeon loner, and uh, I just thought, well, I'm polite, but I'm probably I'm probably new to you. Hmm. You know, the, all these works are probably new to anybody. And that's what Tony and I actually published under that in 2003. So when we did, we went through Diamond and we had Less Than Hero, I had to create a publishing company. So I created Less, uh, Polite Strangers. And then I sort of forgot about it for a while. And then a couple of years ago, I actually made it a, a proper LLC so we could lose money. <laughs> uh, and I could lose some. I could lose some of the bank's money instead of my money. Uh, so I started the LLC for that. And um, I don't know. It's just a term. I think it fits. It sounds like um, it sounds like a Ramones album from the eighties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're clearly a Ramones fan because you're. Uh, without giving anything away, your username is very Ramones centric, isn't it? Yeah. Everything. I'm on. I'm on Instagram as Ramonesome. I saw the Ramones thirty something times. Wow. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I've got a picture of me and Joey from like 1992, and I'm literally clutching my heart because I am so um, <laughs> enraptured uh, that, by that, it. That may be why one of the characters in Nocturnal Commissions is a little yeah. bit of a, a yeah, yeah. punk, shall we say? He yeah. is. Yeah. He is yeah. based off a of, uh, more. He's more of a Johnny Thunders than a Dee Dee Ramone. I gave Greg a lot okay. of reference material, but I always thought the way he dies actually, his origin story is really similar to. Um, Johnny Thunders, who also died um, in the same place. Yeah, is he going to uh, keep the snake? Right. Will the character keep the snake? Because that was fucking awesome <laughs> when that happened. Uh, and the next one, I think, is I think they stop and like the second page, they stop their limo on the highway. He gets out and picks up a skunk that's been recently run over, and drapes <laughs> that around his neck. <laughs> fucking a! <laughs> Amazing. So he, he 
<laughs> he could he can talk to the recently deceased, and that was also sort of a nod to uh, part of the Rattler as well. I thought that mechanism we took that mechanism. So part of the Rattler, we sort of repositioned it and made it the zombie's sort of special ability hmm. to make him unique. Oh. Uh, and the yeah. werewolf too. The werewolf actually character has a backstory that maybe we'll get into one day that also makes him unique among werewolves. Um, but you know, we wanted to play with these stereotypes. You know, like yeah. Um, did these? The, you talk about the book being dialogue heavy. Like the characters themselves were so much fun to put together, yeah. and they're so different, right? There's like an odd couple quality to all three of them being yeah, together. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I got that old, old couple thing immediately. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, one's clearly Walter Matthau, and one's clearly Jack Lemmon. Not that. <laughs> yeah. A rumpy old man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your stuff is on Comicsology. Is it available anywhere else? I mean, I, I think if you go to the Kickstarter, can you pre or Indiegogo? So- There's an Indiegogo uh, pre-order page for Nocturnal Commissions and for Sucker. Uh, so yeah, you can hit either one of those. I also have a website where I sell the books. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, the mail is still working. You can still get physical copies from me that are signed. Yeah. Cool. Well, we will put all the links in the show notes. And, uh, yeah. 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 And we're, Did we we're... cover everything? I oh, uh, my so, next man. Yeah. Go on. I have another book. I'll send it to you guys when it's Ooh. lettered. Uh, I've had the art for a while. I've just been too busy to letter it. But it's called Ghost Band. Okay. Ah. Yeah. And is that, be... is that, being, that hasn't been kickstarted, is it, or has it? No. I might do it as a digital only, given the way things are going right now. Mm. Yeah, okay. uh, and then do a print one later. But it's about a global pandemic, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, like a handful of survivors in San Francisco, and they have like a day before they too will be wiped out. So they decide to start a band, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's about the creative process of you know making art as uh, everyone's dying around you. Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun book to market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I guess it, it. Well, I mean, it's comics, so this was created an awful long time before years ago. Yeah, current, it was current years events. Ago. Yeah, because we so. are seeing some. When well, we've mentioned it, sometimes you do see some people trying to sell new books based on uh, current yeah. climates, which yeah. we're not. We're not, so we're not really a fan of. But, um, yeah, yeah. I, I I know for a fact that a certain comic company has already received two um, COVID pitches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. no one wants that no <laughs> no but i do want a, i do want a book about people that are about to start a band at the end of the world yeah, i don't mind that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, the same what, are, what are we leaving behind you know what is what is life but just making things right i'm not i don't have kids there's no when i think about what's going on in the world right like what can i do jack and shit i can make comic books that's all i can do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and this is the cor- this is the course that I'm on. Yeah. So we're just going to set the controls for the heart of the sun and just keep going. Yeah. But there, there's I, a lot of people really reading comics. Yeah. There's a lot of people yeah. reading comics, and certainly we had a mensch joy reading all your comics recently. Yeah, oh, yeah. So and you, fantastic. You you are welcome back on the show anytime, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. Love it. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss you guys. No. Oh. Nope. <laughs> no one else says nice things about me. <laughs> well, name one of those babies that gets killed after us. Uh, that... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> baby Vince? Oh, we can't eat baby Vince. <laughs> baby Vince. Oh. And everyone, uh, everyone who's listening, do some fan art of baby Vince. No. Uh, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you chicken tasting baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know there there is there is a story reason why he's eating why he's eating babies. It's because people are being vaccinated against vampires. So right. people now at this age they think it was all a hoax, so they're no longer vaccinating their babies. So he often has to go young to uh, to eat well. <laughs> Funny, yeah. What kind of people don't believe in vaccination, eh? Yeah. What's that all about? Yeah. You know, the world's a crazy fucking place. <laughs> He's got those uh, nutters like burning down five G towers because they think it started coronavirus. It's like, yeah. oh, please, Every, everywhere fucking info bonkers. Info. It's all info. Yeah, info, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. But um, yeah, it's a crazy world. Jason's making crazy comics, and we fucking love them. So, yeah, oh, brilliant. Go forth, read them, and thank you again for joining us, Jason. It's been Thanks, awesome. Man. Yeah. What, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I don't know. This is the the peak of my week. 
Yeah, that was a crescendo, wasn't it? Yeah. You fucking that bastard. Was the now solo, I'm going to be depressed. You fucking bricks. <laughs> now what do I do? Uh, trust me, when you hear the episode back, it won't be that, it won't be that special. You're going to edit out all yeah. the compliments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, You're going to make me an anti-vaxxer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anti-vaxxer, <laughs> Corona de- Denier. Yeah, InfoWars <laughs> McNamara, he's on the show this week. Yeah, yeah. His, yeah. His, new, his new book is profiting off. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can make a dozen dollars in the comic book industry. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't if air. You're lucky. If you're lucky. Uh, yeah. Awesome. There you go. Another stuff, another creator to um, follow. Read all, yeah. read all their books. Um, I mean, seriously, they're, they're just great. You know, like, yeah. You say, we, we're we spe- never fake enthusiastic, and that geezer needs you to buy his comics because they are oh, revelatory. Yeah. They're yeah. just good stuff, man. Yeah. You pointed out yeah. something really interesting when we were talking about this book. We were like, Greg Kingle's art is fucking amazing. Like, it's just fantastic. But like, we were sharing the 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 speech and the writing so much yeah. because it's so so on point yeah yeah, yeah. i love it Things about it, Nate. you can tell yeah yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah so uh go follow buy his comics and yeah just support some great comics that we, we want more of. we we've had nocturnal commissions one and now we really hope that there's a two at some point in yeah. the future so um yeah with that with that in mind we've got the rest of the show we've got some shout outs and we've got some comics to recommend you um who wants to start with the shout outs this week gents Shall I do my two? Yeah, go for it. Sure. So, Mars City Vice Part 1 is currently on Indiegogo. It's described as Total Recall meets Miami Vice. There goes. Um, the writer wrote into the podcast and said, um, could we give it a shout? So that's what I'm doing. And it does nice. look good. looks interesting. Um, there's um, uh, also, for, for Atomic Hercules, from a personal point of view, we're looking for some letters for the letters page. So just write your most vilest shite and send it in to us. Where, where um, should, you know where, where should, we are. Where should they send just, it to? Uh, you know, there's a hole un- underneath the tree. No, just send it to. Um, <laughs> oh, fucking oh, hell! Fuck, God, he knows. <laughs> send it. Send it to me on Twitter or something. I don't care. Somewhere. Just do yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, we could yeah, get so them to send it to the Awesome Pod. You can do. Yeah, you can do you send know? it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we've, we've got. Actually, we've actually got Tony dot Awesome Comics Pod at gmail dot com. Yeah, I've got that turned on as well. That that one for a change. You've always got it turned on. Yeah, yeah, baby. Mm. Just those there, my two <laughs> easy ones. Uh, my shout is going to be for our awesome comic uh, drawing group. Yes. We uh, had a great turnout on uh, Wednesday of everyone doing their portraits for, for each other. We did kind of like a, you put your name oh, in. Oh, man, uh, some really good yeah, ones. Yeah, really good. Uh, Vince yeah. is absolutely chuffed, Vince. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, for those who, those Christian who don't Margaret's. know, if, if this if this is the first time that you've ever listened to us, welcome. Um, but yeah, we've got the awesome comics talk group on Facebook, and there's in in this time where creativity is just absolutely just firing off left, right, and centre. Dan Butcher, the genius Dan Butcher, who loves doing an art thread, um, did a portrait art thread, didn't you, Dan? Yeah. So basically, you put your name in, uh, put one out at random, and match everyone up. Yeah. Uh, you didn't know who he was drawing or who was drawing you. Yeah. And gave Any, everyone anyone two weeks. was welcome. Anyone and everyone yes. was welcome. So if you're part of no the bar, Facebook but... yeah. yeah. If you're part you're of in. the Facebook group, then you obviously love comics anyway, so welcome. We love you. Um but yeah, just seeing that art thread. I, lo- I love the art threads on the community group anyway, but that one absolutely smashed it. I mean I was when when I um when I got mine from Christian Wild Goose. Yeah, nice. Um it is now my avatar on everything. <laughs> um, and it absolutely made my day. Absolutely made my day. But just that side, just seeing all the all the rest from everyone was just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it was really well, good. A few people using them as um, their avatars now. I know um, Gareth Hopkins did one for Mister Cumber, didn't he? And he's using that now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just great stuff. And it's just, but it, it wasn't. What I love about it, it was it was genuine attempts to do like you know, they were, obviously with people yeah. doing them in their own styles, but it wasn't like. You know, taking the piss. They're all genuinely. It was an art thread. It was a proper oh, so yeah. art thread. He- Helena's from Art Nine Two was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah amazing. some really good stuff. Yeah. 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 So no matter who you are, if you if you want to take part in things like this, then join the group. And there's Surely. lots of stuff going on like this. Have you got another shout out, Dan? Yes, the the second draw off. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to be announcing it now on the show, but I announce it in the group tomorrow, Monday, the six. Uh, we're going to do uh, an Asterix and Obelix tribute. Oh, That's got nice. Most votes. 
Yeah. I drew so, uh, an, ob- an object the other day, so I'm going to give this one a go for a change. Yeah. Nice yeah. one. And uh, for this sort of thing, is it? It's not so much just a trace them. Everyone do them in their own style, that kind of? Yeah. There's no guidelines. Do whatever you want. Use it as a, as a tribute to the, the, the creator and the characters. Yeah. Yeah. So did you see you the, want to see the um, Sinkovich one? Uh, fucking Sinkovich hell, one. yes. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, and that was just that's done in good. his style, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we do we do need to put a shout out to um, the creator in those books because um, we haven't we haven't talked about it too much on the show in the history of the show, the Asterix um, legacy, obviously. Yeah. But um, they are far more important to getting people into reading comic mm. books and God, yeah. the sequential medium than anyone. I think truly recognises in the UK, at least in the UK. Um, put it this way, we wouldn't have the Etheringtons without them. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I read oh. Asterix as a kid. I, yeah. I read Asterix over Tintin as a kid. Yeah, they were they, yeah, uh, in my primary too, school. That. I remember they had several books on on the shelf in the primary school, and I used to just love. I mean, the whole seeing Asterix just knock a Roman out of his sandals—that classic sort it's of right. Yeah, you know, just. I remember. I remember when I finally. Mind. Sorry, man. Go, go on. on. You get it, Danny. I was going to say when I finally realised what dogmatics was, you know, because you didn't yeah. understand the. I didn't get the any of those words. pun names. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were completely like, oh fucking hell, get a fix. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> completely and the, like, um, went over my head as a kid. And each each sort of area of Europe has got a different, you know, the the French are quite snooty with people, aren't they? And it's just mm. uh, playful. Yeah, really good. And and when we lost, uh, uh, was it last week or do so? Yeah, yeah. We, we lost. Yeah, that was a real shame. I remember seeing a lot of statues and big models and stuff like that when I was on Glam of his stuff. Yeah. Because um, obviously that that reigns over everything over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really brought it home. Yeah, it was a real real loss. I know he'd stopped doing it and hadn't done it for a while, but you know, yeah. still they're the books. But aren't still, they? so yeah. you know, no matter who you are, no matter what your ability, there's another art thread. You know, just show some love to one of the greatest comic book series of all time. Let's be honest. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you can't you can't debate that whether you like it or not. You can't debate it. Um, uh, and yet more creativity to shout out this week. That's what I love about this. There's so much going on at the moment. Loads going on there. Um, yeah. Two two um, sort of little mini movements um, that I want to shout out to. Uh, Sam Williams and Russell Mark Olsen started the hashtag Major League Mugs, which oh, sure uh, yeah. which has yeah. properly taken off. Um, I wrote the um, the little byline for someone's. Um, they sent it to me and said, "Oh, you're good with writing silly stuff. Write this for me." And I wrote a little byline <laughs> for one of the characters. Made me chuckle today. Yeah, so I got, yeah. even I got involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's basically one of those sort of name generators. You know, your the initial, your first initial, and then your last initial. You know, they and they, you, you get your words and you get your your sort of your fictional old timey baseball character name. And then everyone's just been drawing their own baseball card with these different characters the art has just been absolutely phenomenal um it's properly taken off um i can't wait to see what um butcher's gonna do um, yes i certainly had fun with my <laughs> fun with my one you know some some people just sort of like just come, out of nowhere you're just seeing these amazing sort of baseball cards and artwork come up and this is from like a, a lot of people are from the uk where baseball isn't really our pastime yeah. I, I know no, Sam, yeah. sam's a huge fan of it isn't he uh, Sam from Good Comics is a is a massive. Oh, he's done a comic about it, hasn't he? They've yeah. done a comic over there. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, good on uh, Sam and Russell for starting this. It's been immense fun, and also um, hashtag six fan arts, which um, mm. obviously oh, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. if you've been on social media, then you've been seeing um, six boxes and a template of give me six characters to make fan art of. This was kicked off um, by at. M C A P R I G Lion Art. <laughs> I don't want to murder the name. Um, yeah. We'll put a link in the show notes. But uh, you know, fantastic artist that just decided to do this, and it's completely taken off because um, basically artists are just asking whoever follows them, give me some characters to draw, and we're seeing some wonderful sort of fan art in the in these little boxes get posted up. Um, I decided to do it. And 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 I forgive me. I amended the template to say, "Give me six small press characters to make fan art yeah. of." And then I um, yours. Yeah, Butcher, Nick, them, uh, Gav Mitchell's also done. So, you know, there's a little. It's it's a real sort of groundswell of people just loving to draw other people's characters, and it's beautiful. They're, I mean, I, I've done some small press characters. I'm going to do. You know, people very kindly gave me a list of some other characters. It's just nice, you know, to 
be asked to draw these sort of characters as well. It's just it's mm. just fun. It's just fun. So um, yeah, definitely you, you won't have missed it if you've been online. You've seen some amazing artwork. You know, you're seeing full coloured pieces and stuff go out with some of them. I'm thinking you're you are taking the piss. <laughs> yeah, I just did black and white with t- like tones and then slapped yeah. a bit of colour on top. Yeah, sure. and I just did black, white, and grey. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bit of quality. There's probably going to be more of them because there there isn't a deadline on this. There's going to be a lot more people doing yeah. them. So yeah, keep keep it alive. I just wanted to put a shout out to the original template on the templates. It does have it at the small. You you do have the link to the original artist. So so give them a shout as well. But yeah, hashtag six fan arts. Keep an eye out for it. And yeah, just keep the uh, this creativity coming because that's what we mm. love to see. And we also love talking about comic books. And we've gotten to that stage of the show where we're going to recommend a few. Yeah. Um, so Tony, do you want to kick us off? Well, do you want to lead? Do you want to lead us off? Because I'm going to I'm going to throw my tuppence into yours as well. Pardon? Um, <laughs> ooh, uh, <laughs> the uh, we're going to. You, why don't you start with your one? Because it's a funny one. Your one, I like. Yours. Yeah. Um, I um, basically went to Comicsology, even though that the prices have driven up, and for a lot of the UK people, it's. I'm still endeavouring to to seek out indie books to to read, you know, and and hopefully. You know they won't break the bank, which they rarely do with indie books. You get some absolute fucking gems on there cheap. Um, and I found a, a trade that was uh, it was on offer at the time, and it was called Gangster Ass Barista Volume One. Regular is not a size. Um, this is ri- <laughs> written and created by Pat Shand, illustrated by Renzo Rodriguez, uh, lettered and designed by Jim Campbell. Um, oh, is it oh, okay? Yeah, friend of the show. Well, Jim Jim Next letters guess. everything. He, he letters everything that boy, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Edited by a Shannon Lee, um, and just the setup for this is uh, Trinity used to live a life of crime, but now she makes ends meet by working as a barista in New York City. The thing is, though, while making ends meet isn't easy to do with a minimum wage job, when Trinity's past comes calling, it's like the famous quote: "Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in." Um, and yeah, it's, it's black and white. It's um, I think it's about like eighty eighty two pages. Um, issues one to four um, in a nice collection. And yeah, I <laughs> straight up, I just want to say, I took a chance on this um, <laughs> because the title made me laugh. Uh, <laughs> um, and not only that, the preview pages included a panel with the dialogue. I think your baby just took a shit. Yeah, that's um, the one you sent us. That's the, that sold me on it as well. That one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but this, this I I had real fun with this book. Actually, this is a, it's a great book. It's a spin-off book from a series called Destiny um, New York. Is um, it? Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that many times on like you know when I go on the New Comic Book Day browse and stuff, and it, like Destiny New York is a series that's still going. It's like on issue twenty, I think, at the moment. Um, okay, which is awesome for an indie title, I think, of any kind to get to that. I mean, yeah. unless, and Butcher is just the norm, and it? he's absolutely smashing them out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Butcher, but Destiny New York, New York, that series seemed to be more fantastical and involves magic and stuff um, set in New York. Um, this book is more like a straight up comedy sort of crime caper. Yeah. Um, the covers uh, of yeah. this book do make it seem like a gun toting action fest, which it isn't. There is a bit, of, you know. That's not to say there isn't a fair bit of action going on. Um, it's just not the John Woo style shootouts that the cover suggests. Um, I do really like the cover actually, and, and the artwork, you know, the artwork on the covers and stuff is really good. Uh, it is immense fun from cover to cover. I will say um, there's a real sharp wit, and the main character Trinity, I immediately became a huge fan of. Um, not just because she's got a potty mouth and comes out with some absolute gem gem lines um so like a likable rogue with a yeah oh, she's not even an anti-hero she's just yeah. a villain in many bits of <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah she it's like a villain that's trying to be a normal it's you know yeah. is that um but not in the sense of like sometimes when they write these sort of stories you're a villain who's trying to be normal who's then but still doing villainous stuff it's someone who is trying to just leave it all behind and the, and the past is quite a dark one um and you get hints of it um, but uh, you know, immediately the story sets her up really nicely, and you're already on her side. I think that's because of the wit, though, isn't it? And like you know, the, just yeah. the the one-liners and stuff. But yeah, she's just trying to make it in the regular world, even though everyone pisses her off, which is hilarious anyway. And her past is yeah. I, I'm always warming to character. Always warm to characters who are just pissed off by yeah. everyone in real life. Yeah, yeah. who it's, just it's, who yeah. just like yeah, they've they've got little tolerance for people that are just 
just complete idiots and as anyone who's probably worked in you know as a barista or anything like that you you probably have to listen to a lot of people that i mean regular is not a size that it, that comes into lot, all, all these people asking for regulars when that's not actually a size on the list there's some brilliant sort of moments of that people that are like <laughs> the, the customer the customer always thinks they're right even though they're not uh, um and it's, it does have quite a lot of like slice of life humor like that that really appealed to me um because it's partly because it is really sharply written um this book i think uh, i think the characters are well rounded um it's a small cast really i know you get some some other players that come into it later on but you know it's there's three sort of main people that work in this coffee shop that that is kind that are kind of the focus you know trinity's the main yeah one. but you know even the ones that I kind of just supporting players. They're, they're they're still pretty well rounded. You know, you, you do get a sense of who they are. Um, yeah, you do. Um, I found two to not to come in with a downer immediately. I found two of the characters in it too much of a copy of famous people. Put me off a tiny bit. Which, okay. one, which um, ones were they? So the 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 manager of the store who takes the money across the road. I forget his name. Um, is the bloke who plays Apollo Creed's son in those new movies? He was Johnny Storm in the new Fantastic Four movie. See, I didn't see that. I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, is I, I look at a couple. Look at a couple of the first ones. It's, it's him to a T. But is that? Um, but that's just him. That's just the visuals, then, isn't it? That's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. she's using it, yeah. or the artist is using his face. But and the other one is, um, I found the Tony Soprano. <laughs> oh God! There, there is a there is a Tony Soprano yeah. that's so on the nose. It's. It's Tony Soprano, and then they call him. They say it's like something out of The Sopranos, and I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, all right, everything's yeah. whipped around. My head's whipped around there. I don't know what's going on there." But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the art, the art, otherwise is impeccable. I actually say, uh, if I if I ever wrote a review of it, it would be that person can really draw a mean motorcycle. I've got to tell you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of um, it's a very clean line as well, you know, and there's lots of detail. Um, there's clearly some nice referencing going on. Um, especially yeah. like genuine New York sites that some will recognise. Tony Pop pointed one out to me that as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh yeah, of course." Yeah, TikTok Diner Man, where yeah. we've both been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. the names have been changed within the book, and there are, there is some really funny sort of like the lettering of like cereal boxes and and stuff like that. You know, there's some real, you know, it's a it's an artist that's not afraid to draw backgrounds and people in yeah. backgrounds. Like you know, uh, the main character Trinity, she she goes to the store, she comes across this bag of money. Uh, spoilers and but she's got no food in the house she's like oh i'll just have a little bit i'll do, you know they won't mind if i just take a little bit of money because i need to eat and you just see her pushing her trolley through this supermarket and it's absolutely loaded up with nothing but junk food um yeah. which, which is a splash page which is just it's the right time to use a splash page at moments like that <laughs> it just made me, it just made me laugh <laughs> Um, but yeah, but she but, gets she gets character spot on. I really like. Sorry, he gets character. Is it yeah. is it a male who wrote it or a female? I can't remember. Uh, um, I I don't want to say it's Pat Shand. I believe. He's oh, sorry, male. I don't know. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the the writer gets his spot on. There's um a brilliant piss take on hipsters. Her landlord. It's just <laughs> like this spot on. Yeah. Like oh, it just made me laugh. So even some of his dialogue, you're right. You know, yeah. oh, I'm an intersectional. One of his like, oh, I'm actually an intersectional feminist, and then he goes on to say something else. And you're like, oh, they can only be poking fun at him. You know, yeah. yeah. And it's it's the moments <laughs> like that, like we see the facial acting in this book is pretty spot on as well. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I think. Yeah, have you seen me there? That panel of the uh, the bloke running away with his trousers running. There down. is one. <laughs> there is one moment. I immediately. Um, sent to the the guys on the on the show because i it was a spit take moment for me when i was uh, i was reading with my coffee in the morning um <laughs> i kind of don't want to spoil it but i kind of have to i, I, I think you, you know you'll you be prepared for this um she basically gets the main character gets mugged walking through the, the park there's this homeless guy that takes takes the bag off her um and she gets knocked to the ground and as he's running away she's got her phone she take, gets her phone out so she can take a picture of him because his, his trousers sort of came down around his ankles as, as he's <laughs> sort of mugging her and as he's running away you can see his ass cheeks and there's nipples on each of the bum cheeks <laughs> and what is the line she says I can't remember what it is now you say no, oh it is hang on bear with me while I found it because it was literally she's staring at her phone absolutely stunned and I'm looking for it now. Oh, yeah. Are those 
fucking arse nipples. Um, <laughs> you, you don't normally see dialogue like that in a comic. Uh, I mean, we've um, all played we've all played bum crack or boobs, haven't we? We've yeah. all played that game. Yeah, um, <laughs> just takes it to a whole other level. I mean, this was just just to clarify um, is a homeless guy that had. Um, nipples tattooed on his bum cheeks because he thought it was funny. That's one of the, one of <laughs> it the is most... funny. It is yeah. funny. It is funny. <laughs> it, it is it is funny. Um but that was a, a laugh out loud moment that you have to see I've got a tat- I've got a tattoo of a massive penis tattooed on my penis. Uh, right. How did they manage to draw that so small? <laughs> um <laughs> it's perspective baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm only joking. He's hung like an ox. Yeah. But this book is um, <laughs> no, it was, it was it was just great fun. It was a real good fun to read. It, it was it was one of those. I just took a punt on it and I started reading it, and I was me like, yeah, they, I'm I'm glad I bought this because it was it is good fun. Um, I love the fact we're ruining our, our our bank accounts by just reading constant comicsology comics. Yeah. It's yeah. Weak. <laughs> Yeah, mine's a fucking comicsology comic. Yeah, and I said oh, I'm going to fucking buy anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do know that. Um, yeah, you can find it. Uh, there's probably lots of other places to get it. It's uh, Space Between Entertainment. Um, they, like I say, they've done Destiny New York. They also did a, a book that I talked about, also written by Pat Shand, uh, called Prison okay. Witch. Prison Witch. Do you remember when I talked about? Oh that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was another sort of home run as well. So definitely creators to watch out for. Um, I might give that Destiny New York um, a bit of a try because I, I think the volumes are available on digital for like th- three quid or something like that. So um, oh, I might have a look myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think it's a very different kind of book. Um, oh, is it? Is it yeah. not one of these sort of magical bollocks things? Is it? it does have magic in it, I think. <laughs> Whereas this, uh, yeah, okay. th- that's but... why this intrigued me that it was in the same universe because this felt like a, you know, you wouldn't. Yeah, know. this is like a street street level crime thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I think it speaks to a lot that a spin off book can be seen for its own thing. I think there's a lot to be said about that. I think they've nailed this. Um, you know, you don't need to read the other books to get a huge amount of yeah. out of this book. It should stand alone. Yeah, because I think a lot of spin off books are really catering only to the audience that are reading the main yeah. one. Which it's like my spin off book from Marilyn Manson called Marilyn Bungalow is going to cater to the same crowd. Yeah. <laughs> You, it, it's not mansion it, uh, never mind no it's um, the name of a comic Marilyn Mansion don't you read my blog <laughs> <laughs> well these days I'm listening to it you so, didn't give a it, shout out Tony to your uh, your honest review month they're still cracking on yeah it's still going I've got about another 10 days left yeah still getting getting on with it yeah, yeah, yeah. nice yeah so and we'll get another review from Tony in a minute so yes Gangster Ass Barista Volume 1 regular is not size highly recommended it was great fun so so there you go. That is mine. Who wants to go next? Cool. Shall I it's go next? Because I've just sent you a you, you guys the cover to this book, which I'm going to okay. ask you about in a minute. <clears throat> so mine is uh, Billionaire Island issue one. Came out two weeks ago from Ahoy Comics. Do you remember when comics used to come out weekly? Do you remember those days? Yeah. It was uh, it was back then. It's um, written by Mark Russell, who I'm I'm an admirer of Mark's work. I think the um, Snagglepuss book he put out. Cup about a year and a half ago, I suppose. Now that I read it, absolutely loved it. Absolutely oh, yeah, brilliant. Really talking great. about that one, yeah. Outstanding writing, you know, genuinely well written. Um, art by Steve Pugh, who's always fairly reliable, isn't he, Steve? Yeah. Um, colors by Ch- Chris Chuckry, letters by Rob Steen. Um, it was unfortunately three ninety nine on Comicsology, hugely overpriced. Full color, thirty two pages. When I say thirty two pages, it's actually twenty two pages of the story, and then uh, a text piece, a, p- a page of poetry, believe it or not, and um, then a backup, a preview piece for another comic. So if you're going to go in, it's actually twenty two pages. But Comicsology okay. describes it as thirty two pages the total package if that makes sense um the story welcome to billionaire island where anything goes if you can afford it but the island's ultra rich inhabitants are going to learn that their ill-gotten gains come at a very high price i'm going to start with the cover i think that's important um and i'm going to ask you what you think about it so i've sent it through to you on whatsapp so for those that can't see it's billionaire island is written in sort of gold writing along the top with palm trees coming out the Mm. icon iconic um banner title on it it's um I'm going to call it faux um, Banksy. Yeah, um, it's yeah. my description of it. Yeah. Um, in fact, I put this into the Yandex um, reverse image search, and it came back with a load of Banksy pictures that are sort of of a similar outline. You mm. know the way Banksy does this. Yeah. yeah, it's not an outline, but it's, it's a sort of, sort of shadowed figure. It's like a it? stencil kind of yeah. image. Yeah, and there's um, 
<clears throat> what I look like, dollar notes flying in the air. I'm going to say I don't like it. I don't think it's yeah, representative like of the it. inside. It just... Um, what, I, do you, what do you think? Uh, the thing um, I would probably... is negative to me is, is the title Billionaire Island. That looks like a sort of... Um, where do you get at the top of a scratch card? Uh, yeah, it's really right. dark. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> and is. Every, every letter seems to have the same gradient effect on it, yeah. which really throws it off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Literally I think the, I think every single one here. Nice. Is the actual story based somewhere in Africa? Because there seems to be um, where the, where this figure is stepping on the world and it's sort of deflating. Yeah. Um, there seems to be sort of like a, a spray, you know, like. It's almost like blood coming out of the bottom of Africa, isn't it? Yeah. Almost a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah I feel like they, that. It, yeah. it needs a stronger concept, that cover, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right, man. It's also got the worst map in the world in it. If you if you sort of page through the issue, I know you haven't got it. There's a map of uh, the world. Uh, I'm just trying to find it now, but it's missing. It's missing big sections. It does it actually doesn't make any sense. Um, the um, I'm going to say I don't like the cover. I think it's dull. I don't think it stands out. It's not representative of the sort of humorous insides. Actually, if you get into it, it's quite satirical as a comic. Um, so it starts out with a series of almost like um, we're watching a TV spot, which I kind of like as an effect. It was, it's mm. been used on a lot of things. It was used on martial law. It's used in Dark Knight Returns. It's uh, used in The Boys and stuff like that. And I kind of like that sort of cheap. It looks like a cheap advert that you'd see on Fox News or something. You know, one of those sort of things. Um, and it's Florida 2044. You're watching the Caviar Network, a private channel for billionaires <laughs> by billionaires. Please stand by while we verify your bank account number. So the main villain in it um, is, a, I described him as a kind of a cross between Mark Zuckerberg and um, Richard Branson. He's got kind of That's Mark Zuckerberg's combo. hair. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He's got kind of Mark Zuckerberg's hair, you know, like a data character. Um and it's sort of fairly young, a little bit like Zuckerberg. And it's good. he's wearing the clothes that Branson would wear, you know, like a sort of Hawaiian shirt underneath a rolled up sleeves, expensive suit, like all in um, beige, you know, as if he lives on an island his whole life. And, you know, he's making sort of that prey to me sort of hand signal thing that he does. Mm. Um, so he he owns an island and he t- he's, a, he's also a little bit of a cross between like Lex Luthor. There's a Lex Luthor element to him, but also okay. somebody who's just a little bit can't doesn't give a fuck and will mess with people just for his own amusement. Maybe a a bit of a sort of Joker Loki kind of character. Um, he 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 gets interviewed by a journalist and suckers are into joining him in the island. Um, and then spoilers halfway through, um, he says, "Oh, can you wait for me in the waiting room?" And she walks into the waiting room. The door closes, and she realizes she's trapped with a load of other employees who have upset him in this caged room where some of the employees have been in there for years. And that's the kind of um, where it starts. There's a hitman involved who's after someone. Um, Will she get rescued? She's managed to get a message off. Um, So it's got that a lot like we talked about earlier with Jason. It's got that sort of consumerism element to it. That's satire on the current state of affairs in the world where we worship these rich people. We we let them get away with things. We see they're on the E! News channel or something like that. And they're they're just doing what they like. They get away with what they like. and they they are worshipped because they live this sort of glamorous lifestyle on an island, which has got loads of drones around it. And if you go on there, every time you walk through an arch, it, it registers how much money you've got in your bank account. And if it's under a billion, you get thrown off the island by drones. Uh, it's it's an interesting idea. Pew's art is more cartoon, like we talked about earlier, caricature more cartoony than I normally see from him. It's got... Um, it's a little bit of the Mad Magazine to it, maybe at moments. Right. Um, he he controls it all. The writing is just really spot on. Uh, it's a shame it's just twenty two pages. If this was a nice big album of some kind with this story from start to finish, it would be much more palatable to me rather than spending four quid on twenty two pages. Um, yeah, I'm going to see where it goes. I'm hoping that Ahoy Comics, who put out some interesting stuff, they did Second Coming. Um, they did that Dragonfly Man book. They've done. They've, they're doing some interesting stuff. Um, I, I like to keep an eye on them, see what comes out from them. They're an interesting company. Ahoy Comics. Uh, you know, we've talked about them a few times, mm. but I know it's still on Comicsology. Submit on Comicsology. They're not. They don't have their own sort of full-on page, which is a strange one. I was quite surprised at that. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's okay. It's an idea. It's interesting. It's well written and it's well drawn. I just uh, 
I just found the cover very underwhelming. And bear, bear in mind, we go through all the covers every week, and I, I don't know. Did you guys? Is this reminiscent of the one you spotted before? Or I did. I remember. I I definitely remember seeing this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't pick yeah. it. But... No. Yeah. yeah, that whole Banksy rip though is you know I've been seeing that on T-shirts in Camden for the last twenty years. We don't really need it. <laughs> yeah, to it's all been maybe done, in then. in the US. I don't know. It's just kind of Banksy's been a bit done to death. Yeah, so, I uh... think so. Yeah, and it's as it like a comic about consumerism and about greed and about money and about millionaires and billionaires. Is it? It's a little bit on the nose for me. Something else could have been done. I'd rather see um, some Steve Pugh on the cover. I'd rather see some of his art on the cover. And I'm much bigger fan of the interior art is being on the cover sometimes i like prefer that because it gives you a taste it's a whole package it gives you a taste of what you're gonna get inside yeah i can stand yeah. that yeah 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 um yeah it's, it's not bad it's I, I liked it for what it was um yeah so billionaire island issue one uh, ahoy comics there you go nice Dan awesome. Butcher. i've gone back to a series uh we've read uh i'm not sure if all of us have read it definitely me and tony have you read this vince orphans You've been read, catching Ooh, up with this? Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I read the first one because we talked about it on the show, didn't we, the, the first one? Yeah. 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 So I uh, bought issue three and I'm cracking on with that. Okay, this cool. one's kind of gone back to more what I've kind of liked about the series, and that's when it, it flashes back to the kids going through the training program Yeah, from being like the, the ordinary kids to uh, like the super soldiers. And it focuses on one of them who's Ringo as the kid, and he grows up to be uh, the soldier gunslinger. <clears throat> and he has a crash on a planet's surface during a dogfight in space, and he has to survive on his own. <clears throat> and it kind of flashes back to the school period where this Ringo kid, he's uh, quite headstrong, a bit of a loner, and he, out of all the kids in the group, he starts to work out that they're a little bit stronger and smarter than the people teaching them. That was and... a nice little turnaround for me, that, yeah. that element of it. I like that. Yeah, you suddenly realise that the only reason the teachers are in charge is because of these mind games they're playing with them, don't you? Yeah, so the, the kind of general has to enact a mind game to kind of bring this Ringo kid uh, in line to kind of break him, as it were. and Because uh, he, he's like one of the best ones there and they don't want to lose him. But if he goes unpunished, it could risk bringing all the other students that, the realisation that there's very little holding them in check because you don't know what's happening yet, but like they've been subjected to some kind of medical treatment or something yeah. that's making them more sort than what they are. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting as well, because there's in the comic, there's six, but in the camp, there's 30, 40. There's a lot of them. Mm. Yeah. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen as it plays out. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know about you, Tony. I prefer the the, the training camp stuff as opposed to the yeah, the it's a bit of... too uh, Starship Troopers on the nose for me occasionally. The, yeah, the battles, the stuff where he's stranded, I didn't mind so much. I thought that was okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, I've I've read four. I think four's out now as well. Okay, um, so I'm sort of one ahead. But yeah, it's um, it's got that Stephen King. Every kid's got a character. There's it's interesting and they're playing yeah. with it. I really like the, um, the general who's in charge of it. I yeah, find him great. a really interesting character. Yeah. Him, him, uh, there's the, the, the nurse, uh, I'm not sure that the doctor, whatever her name is, I really yeah. like that character, all the kid character. When it kind of goes into like the modern day, this feels like I've seen all this before and it's not, uh, not yeah, particularly I'm, interesting. I'm a little bit done. lost as to who's who occasionally when it goes into the future. Yeah. The, it's kind of, it's not always it clear. Good. No, yeah. I'm like, which kid was that again? And then, like, this yeah. one. It seems a lot of them, they're focusing on one one kid. Yeah. Like one or two of them flashing back, and you kind of get to know them a bit more. So this one kind of focuses on the Ringo character and the uh, the one of the younger girls in the group. But, uh, so I think yeah, what they're doing, Mag- Magnetic Press are bringing... They've already brought this all out, haven't they? As I understand it, it's bigger collections. Yeah. I think you can read beyond this if you buy the collections. But because the issues were quite cheap, I think even now they're only two ninety nine, aren't they, for... This one jumped up. It's about oh, it? four quid. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I've been following them in the issues, and I thought oh, I don't want to double dip, so I'm just following in the issues and sort of taking my time with it. But yeah, you can read ahead, I think, if you want. To. I'd rather just buy a trade. I mean, yeah. I'm kind of the, I'm really loath to use Comicsology nowadays, it's, unless there's a kind of sale on. But I'm yeah. quite happy to buy a title. I think, oh, I like the look of this, and get get a trade of it. I think you can yeah. get them. I think um, I was looking at um, Infinity Eight on the other day, and I think you can buy the trades off. Ah, uh, okay. I might, yeah, I might, I might check that out. Yeah. 
Good stuff. Yeah, it's a good nice. series. It is a good series, though. It's a, I don't know. Not, not be down on it, but yeah. If that's like the first volume, I don't know where they're going to take this second or third one. I presume away from this war. This war can't go on forever because there's not the legs on it. Yeah, I've I've got a feeling that you see the the issue you're talking about there, or the following issue. There's an art change. Oh, okay. The next one there might be an art change. Yeah, there's not too book. not too much of a shift, but there is a difference in it. It's Robert Reccioni and Emilio. Mamakari. Yeah, I can't the, the, second, yeah. the next one is, but yeah, I think there is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Cool. No, it's, yeah, it's a good series. I'll, I will keep with it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to knock it. It's, it's a good fun read. Uh, yeah. Nice. So cool. lots of fantastic comics for you to go out and check out, search, read, just enjoy. Um, yeah, the recommendation section is going to be full. Of uh, the page itself is going to be full of links to check out mm. these amazing creators, as it is every week. And we thank you for listening to us every week, and we hope you enjoyed this week's show. Um, we certainly had, had a lot of fun. Well, we always do. I think we, we, we just like looking, yeah. talking to each other. I was about to say looking at each yeah, other. We do, but I yeah. do like looking. At them as well. <laughs> we like that. We like that too. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Um, I could gaze at them all day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, we hope you enjoyed this show. If there's anything you want to let us know about future events um comics you're going to release you know um uh, is it perhaps we we got a name wrong or perhaps you just want to well luckily yeah tell us that we did all right then there's several different ways yeah. you can do it you can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail.com likewise if you have a letter for the atomics hercules 2 page send your letters these are just fictional letters aren't they tony yeah so send what you're liking yeah, and send them to yeah. t- Tony dot awesome comics pod at gmail dot com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the awesome pod, where we'll be retweeting the show, just putting the shout out for all these different things that are going on, and probably retweeting a lot. There, there, we're going to post some stuff about the art thread, uh, different art yeah. threads and stuff going on. Oh, can I just mention? Does. I forgot. I forgot to mention earlier. Can I thank Mark Caprinaroff? who sent through some comics, which I'm about to read tomorrow. I looked at one of them. looks excellent. Thank you, dude. Nice. Cheers for it, Candy. Beautiful. You should send through our guest, uh, Atomic Hercules 1. Oh, we should, should do, I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, if you do the um, Book of Faces, go to facebook.com slash awesomecomicspodcast. And as we mentioned it earlier in the show, please, please, please join the group on Facebook, Awesome Comics Talk. It's the only thing on Facebook you really need to do, actually, because yeah. there's a fantastic community of people who just want to talk about it. There's no hard selling. There's no, like, just links for Kickstarters and absolutely no interaction with people. There's a fantastic community of people there who just talk about comics, comic events, creating and stuff. There's wonderful stuff going on there. Highly recommend it. Uh, so just search for Awesome Comics Talk. If you want to apply with the administrators, so say you listen to this show, thumbs up, and what comics you like, and we'll we'll just send you through to have fun. Um, and thank you for listening to us, whether it was on the website, awesomecomics.podbean.com. If you listen to us on iTunes, subscribe and leave a review, and it just helps get the word out about more comics. Uh, there's loads of networks that you can listen to po- podcasts these days. They're all over the shop, like Spotify, yep. Stitcher, right, Podnose, Podknife. What other networks are we on, Tony? Pod Niagara Balls. <laughs> Sometimes I want, yeah, that was quite a good one. I, I sometimes yeah, I, I want. I, we're silent during that bit just to let the joke just fall dead on its ass. But that was quite good. <laughs> that was quite good. Yeah, that was winning. That yeah, joke. Thank you. Yeah, thank that, you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, butcher. Anyway, uh, where... <laughs> yeah. Stay, stick around to the end for a great quote. Oh, yes. Yeah, the best quote ever. There's a little bit coming after the, the credits, so stay tuned for that. Um, but until then, where can people find us online, etc.? Tony? com for Honest Review Month. All the details on there you need to hear or read the reviews. Okay? Where, can, where can people buy your comics? Uh, com. Uh, yes. where, where can people hear your Judas. No, I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> your, Judas. your other fans. Fanta- the amount of message I got. Oh, oh, and Judas. I'm getting called Judas now on Twitter. <laughs> uh, no, in all seriousness, yeah. if you want more fantastic comic book talk, then Tony's got a, a, a spin off podcast. Spin-off. Yeah. I'm the uh, Sarah Jane Chronicles of this podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next generation. Oh, don't say that. I'm Voyager. More Voyager. 
Um, <laughs> the uh, neverironanything.podbean.com. Yes. I edited something this week. I was quite proud of myself. I was saying yeah, to you nice. earlier, wasn't I? Yeah. As he managed to edit something. Yeah. Yeah. He never edits himself, though. He's too gangster for That's that. True. That's true. <laughs> Um, where can people find you Dan you can find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic and you can read Vanguard at VanguardComic.com which you should I think about that yeah okay. yeah. yeah I've got to start up, try and start updating soon but uh, all this you... fucking bullshit has been uh, sending me a loop I'm, <laughs> I'm tanking through old uh, El Marvo 2 the artwork on that oh I've got beautiful yeah, it's yeah. oh, beautiful stuff there's one page I fucking dialed it right up and I was like oh that's <laughs> Now, now, <laughs> listeners, those that have checked out Dan Butcher's artwork, um, you know he takes it to the extreme. So when he says he's dialed it right up, don't you agree with me? Yeah. That's a terrifying and wonderful thought. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to seeing that. Um, you can find me on the socials like a hipster. No, no, God, no. Um, but you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jester Diablo, where... Um, I'm posting a bit more artwork and pictures of my cats. So there you Yay. go. Uh, um, thank you once again to Jason McNamara to, for joining us this week. It was a, a much fun. Um, but all you guys have to do now is go forth, stay healthy, stay safe, um, read loads of comics, do lots of artwork, whatever you're doing. We hope you have a brilliant time doing it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And from Dan, Tony, and myself, have a brilliant week. And guys, what should they do? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Yeah, That's what they said. good. Yeah. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye. It's a time for strong words and passionate opinions. <laughs> he has that written on his pants. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you see the pants, the time for talking's over. <laughs> <laughs> Just that comment after the credits. Just that comment. <laughs> <laughs>